Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, I guess. What time is it? One o'clock. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Amerlin. Uh, I'm here bringing you a special showcase for Sunday. Uh, it's a showcase of the some of the games from the Metroid Prime series. Uh, we've got one of my friends, Mr. Shasta, running Metroid Prime Hunters, and then we've got Aaron Explosives running Metroid Prime 2 100%. So really excited for these. I really like these games. I think they're really cool um, twists on like how a first-person shooter usually works. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, uh, we'll go ahead and throw it over to Shasta. Yo, what's going on, everybody? I'm Mr. Orange Core Shasta, and I'm playing Metroid Prime Hunters for the Nintendo DS. This game's pretty cool. It's actually one of the first games I speedrun way back in 2014. It's also my first GE hero back in SGQ 2015 as well. I've, yeah, so this game has not been seen on this channel since like in like six years or so. So I guess uh, I don't know, be thankful, maybe. It's a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of new stuff in it since the last time I showed off this game. A lot of really, really great stuff. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Guess we can count it down then if we're, if we're ready to go. Yeah, let it rip. All right, cool. Let's go. Let's go. Three, two, one. What bam? All right. So this game starts off with uh, essentially Samus and a bunch of other bounty hunters getting a, a random signal in the middle of a and like just a random distress signal, and they go to investigate it. Turns out it's something really powerful that Samus needs to stop. So yeah, that's kind of the plot synopsis. In like 10 seconds something like that but in this game we actually, unless unlike other metro games we actually start off with a bunch of different powers that we normally don't have for instance we off the, right off the bat we have charge beam we have morph ball we have boost ball we have scan visor um we have missiles as well and we can charge the missiles in this game which is unique to this one actually kind of unique you can do that in metroid fusion but it's not the same it's just the fusion missiles yeah we gotta do a lot of that stuff I'm going to explain it right now, too, that this category is called All Items because uh, if, I, if I called it 100% instead, I'd have to scan, like, everything in the game. Like, every enemy, every door, every, like, different, every, like, hidden piece of dialogue in this, like, everything. And that's not fun. So this category exists because getting every item in the game is really cool and fun and makes the run just a lot easier. So, yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah, so like what's what's the major difference between like this and any person? Like Um more items. <laughs> well, that's, okay, that's, literally, yeah. that's literally it. It's, it's nothing else, as far as I'm aware. This game's structure is that you have to collect like eight different objects throughout the game called Octolis. And like that allows you access to the last area of the game, and you can't you can't avoid doing that. Also, we're gonna do the okay. first trick of the run right here. First out of bounds, essentially. Uh, I'm just gonna do it's called we call it a dip clip because you dip up and down. That's not mess with the bomb jump. Just like this with a bomb jump, and then boost working at the bottom. And if I do it correctly, I'll clip right into this object here. This skips a fight, so like 30 seconds. Second try, nice. Whoa. There we go. So we got we got what, the, what we got there is called an artifact. We, in order to unlock the boss of each area of the game, we need to get three artifacts. So that's the first one we have right there. That's the first like new trick as well too. So y'all haven't seen this game in like six years or so. I don't know if anyone's here for my first run of this, but I'm gonna pretend all of you were, so yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we got our first like E-Tang right there. It feels kind of a bomb because it's fast. I shot myself with a missile because it's uh, not fast. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'm just gonna go on the outside of this room here and then there's a trick I can do up here that I would do normally in like a PB attempt. It's like an out of bounds. It takes me directly to like, this gets a cutscene about to hit right here and also takes me directly to the next item. But yeah, I'm not gonna do that. This is Candon. He's the first hunter we're gonna see in this run. Certainly not the last, but definitely the first one. Yeah, we're gonna go over and get this item. They're gonna do, they're gonna do the hardest trick in the run called Volt Driver early. Essentially, this is an out of bounds that was theorized for a long time and was just found, I think, last year or like just our year before. It was, is a uh, essentially gives us Volt Driver a power not supposed to have until way later into the game, way earlier. I'm gonna concentrate for this one because this trick is really, really difficult. Here we go. Let's try it. So, we're gonna try and do a clip, a morph ball clip into the wall here. 
by un by unmorphing at the right time and trying to set myself up perfectly for that one. It's very precise. We never set for this for a long time, but now we do. That wouldn't have worked on when I tried that one. So this trick might take me a little bit. It's, it's just very tricky. It's, it's very difficult. Oops. Come on. I was getting this no problem in practice earlier. I believe. It's even the hard parts. It's just the, the annoying part. Oh no. Come on, come on. You got this, Samus. I believe in you. My work. I'm essentially trying to set myself up like a frame or two away from the wall by doing this. Oops. That's that's the idea here. There we go. Nice. So we, cl we clip on through and then use the scan vitals so I can see the items inside this room. There's a UA tank right there, which you need to get for all items. And then right over here is Volt Driver. The power I'm not supposed to have right here. I'm not supposed to have this just yet. But here's the problem. We now need to get out of the room and everything is still also unloaded. So I have a little, I have a little set for this. This is, we're doing another dip clip, but we have to do this while everything is unloaded currently. So, uh, yeah, I got a first try. All right. Well, here's the hard part now. Actually, did I get a first try? I did get a first try. I'm, I'm shooting into the void currently. Here's the hard part. I need to, I'll, I need to shoot the ground so I, I don't, so I don't fall into the void here. So I know where I'm going essentially. And then once I get close enough to uh, this right here, I'm gonna do a bomb jump. Nice, we got it. There we nice. go. <laughs> I was yeah, really I was, nervous about that. I was watching you practice this in setup, and it's just it, this looks this is wild. Like this is why I really like Prime as a game series because it all has all these like absolutely crazy glitches. Absolutely. And yeah, okay. So here's the cool thing about that trick right there is that now we can just kind of break a lot of the bosses from here on out. Not this one right here, but like later, but I'm just gonna preface that. Here's, here's our fight of Candon. Essentially, I'm just gonna hit him a lot. And then at some point he's gonna come out of his little snake form here and then try and uh, hurt me. But I'm gonna stand on this platform here and he just will kind of stand still until he gets to a certain like health threshold, I guess. Like right there, now he starts moving out towards me. And then we go right over here and he's dead. Just like that. Yeah, Volt Driver Early, by the way, is a trick new to this run, like... And I'm glad I got to show that one off without too much of a hitch once I actually got inside there. Because, yeah, we kind of just do everything while it's unloaded, and that final clip especially with the Morph Ball is really, really hard. I had to practice that trick and take her, like, a lot. I think it took me, like, over an hour to get even once when I first learned it. Now I can do it, like, no problem, thankfully. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this game has uh, missile jumping, kind of similar to Quake. I'd say that and immediately hit the platform there, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, we can jump right there and then just go up there and skip a few platforms. That's a future of this game. It's not in any other, any other Prime game, it's just, just a thing in Hunters. There's our last artifacts. Now we're going, on, going to fight the first boss right here, which is uh, Cryofin. He's essentially just a giant pillar with a bunch of eyes on them, and we have to defeat the, we have to destroy the eyes once they light up blue. That's the idea. We can actually fight this boss a bit faster with Volt Driver though. It's pretty nice. I won't use it like immediately yet, but once it actually like get becomes vulnerable, then then we'll use it. Like right here. Oops, I'm missing him a lot. <laughs> I was gonna say, isn't that fast? But no, I missed him. It's fine. Speed, whoa, crazy. The idea of Volt Driver is that you can kind of just mash it a bunch. So I'm just trying to mash as fast as I can while using it because speed it just is good. There we go. That's first boss fight right there. How? How difficult is it to get like used to the controls in uh, like a DS versus, you know, doing on a, a, like a controller? I guess it's kind of the same, but. I forgot, I, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, um, this is a DS game, by the way. This is a DS FPS. So I'm actually using the touchscreen to aim and everything right now. 
I'm using like the L and R buttons to like move around and like uh circle pan all that. It's a bit difficult. It was difficult at first, but I got used to it over time. I've just been running this game for a while, so I got I got better just at doing this, but it's it was tricky at first to say the least. That being said, I did spend a lot of time in this game before I even tried to run it, just like not in multiplayer, weirdly enough, but like I did play the same story mode a lot back in the day. <laughs> there is multiplayer for Ooh, this? Ooh, there we go. First try. Yeah, it's actually the thing people remember most about this game is the multiplayer. It's really right. cool. Like, there's like a ton of maps and like all the hunters are different characters you can play in it. It's great. By the way, we're about to do a lot of tricks right here. We're, we're secret spraying the game because we have Volt, we get, they have Volt Driver. We're not supposed to be here just yet. We're supposed to be here way later in the game, but since we have Volt Driver, we can open up that door right now and just go do a lot of the second half of, of uh, Slusher Archives here. That's the name of this area, Slusher Archives. This room lags a lot, by the way. <laughs> it, it can not lag a lot if I don't, if I like went, went really fast there, but I didn't go fast enough. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, not to be here just yet. I'll say that again. We're gonna unlock this, uh, this, uh, this artifact right here and then hopefully make this cycle right up here. There we go, no problem. Now we're going to this morph ball maze sort of area here. Or not morph ball maze, just this maze. It's like a portal maze. And go right over here. Put myself up on this wall and then do a bomb jump and boost off the second bomb, just like that. Whoa, why'd it go that way? That was weird. <laughs> and then doing that allows us to skip a lot of portals and get this power early as well, shock coil. This power is very good as long as you don't break the chain. It's kind of like a, a Tesla coil, if you will. Very electric. <laughs> Very good. Now we're gonna use. Uh, we have to defeat one of the guardians in this room. These enemies are called guardians right here. I'm falling down. I don't want to fall down here. <laughs> uh, these things. These, these guys are luck, so I hope they're they're nice. That one wasn't very nice, but it's fine. All right. Now that unlocks a little key for us. We're gonna go over here and unlock the and unlock the artifact in this area. Kind of the, so kind of the goal right now in general is to just get everything in this area and then leave. We actually can't beat this like second half of the Celestial Archives until way later because we need a certain power for the boss. We currently, we currently don't have that power and we won't get it for a long time this run. So right now we're just trying to get everything we can. But doing it way earlier like this saves a lot of time because otherwise we have to backtrack a lot like on our second visits. Yeah, there's a UA tank, there's an artifact, we're gonna go right up here. It's not really intended that jump, but we can just kind of do it because, I don't know, it's, it's just actually kind of easy. Yeah, then we go over here, get this missile tank, and then we go into the hardest room in the game, so hopefully I don't fail that one. I'll play it safely though. I'll play it actually like super safely because if I mess up, if I mess up and die here, I have to redo this entire escape sequence and screw that. Because <laughs> right now I'm currently trying to escape. That's what I'm supposed to be doing right now. I'm supposed to be escaping, but we're not. Wait, is this like is the it? end of the game? No, it's not the end of the game. We're just, okay. So after each, whenever we get any, any, any of the Oculus in this game, we're supposed to be escaping the planet because the game says so. It, there's really no reason why. We don't, the planet's not exploding or anything, but we'll just die if we don't escape. So yeah. Oops. Try to hit that door there. All right, destroy these three things right here. Oh, hello. <laughs> don't do that. There we go, good. <clears throat> All right, and now, for some reason, it's not supposed to work during an escape sequence, but if you scan a portal for the first time during an escape sequence, you can just kind of use it. Don't know why, but yeah, that's the thing. And with that, we're just gonna get out of here. We're just gonna skedaddle on out of Celestial Archives, if you will. So the structure of this game is that there's actually four planets we can explore, instead of the normal, like, one for Metroid Prime. I don't know if Prime 3 has like multiple planets to explore, but this one does for sure. And here's the second planet right here, Alinos. This one's more covered in lava everywhere, and it's really cool. As you can see, lots of lava. All right, so we're just gonna kind of ignore the lava as well too because it doesn't really do much damage to us. I'm gonna go right through it. Up, oh, please jump. There we go. 
I don't know, that damage seemed pretty fast. I would, I would be worried. <laughs> it's pretty fast, but we're, all, we're also pretty fast, so it's not a big deal. All right, we're getting another... another. So if, if you thought what I did before was broken, check out what we're going to do right here. It's actually not as broken. I'm kind of hype overhyping it, but it's kind of cool. So this is, kind of, this is a maze right here, but if I do this correctly, we can... I got to reset my camera real quick. We can do this. Oops. Wow, I missed that twice. Just barely. All right, let's try that again. There we go, third try. We, we nice. kind of just skip the maze by clipping through the floor, and it gets an artifact right there. So I can go all the way around and, do, and like, have a few cuts in play and stuff. Now, one of the benefits of Volt Driver is that this room right here, we can actually just skip most of it by just hitting that, hitting that little shield there and going on through. We're supposed to have, you're supposed to like be a cutscene here, introduce the Spire, another, another one of the Hunters, but we just, we don't see that. <laughs> There's a few more rooms of enemies there we have to go through, but we just don't, we just don't do that. There we go, there's Spire by the way, he's, he's like just a rock creature, he has a bunch of gems and rocks around him and stuff. He's actually really cool. He's also a bit random with how he moves, so... We gotta hope that he doesn't move too erratically right here. And also in a little bit once I actually do find him properly, but yeah. Kinda of just gonna leave. <laughs> He's gonna, just gonna head out. No more trap back and forth stream planets? You do actually, yeah. In order to beat this game, you need to get all the Octoliths, and there are two in each planet. Therefore, also six artifacts in each planet to unlock the Octoliths. Alright, so we're gonna shoot a missile through a wall here, just because we can. It just works for some reason, and it allows, allows us to just hit him earlier. Make him start moving earlier than intended. I'm gonna try and make him go over here? Nope, he fell off the cliff, that's fine. We'll, we'll fall off in a second too, but I just need to get this missile first. Missiles aren't very good for combat in this game, weirdly enough. We mostly just use them for clipping out of bounds, which you'll see in the next plan mostly. But yeah. Kill him a... Uh, the Spire Inspire there just allows, or uh, slaying the Spire there, let me just say that, ha ha ha, anyways. Uh, <laughs> allows us just to unlock this artifact, that's all we do. Which is the third one in this area now, so we can just go over here and fight the boss, after all that. Just... And now, I'm playing the English version, because, I used to actually run this game on Japanese, but I'm playing the English version because of this right here. This portal right here, for some reason, just works during the escape sequence after he defeats this boss fight this boss right here that saves like over a minute or so just to use it right now after he defeats his boss here i don't know why it's just a thing spire does really rock i agree this is this is slunch by the way he's just a giant ball creature with like tackles and stuff sorry what was that name <laughs> Flinch. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange, isn't it? What's also strange is he's dead. That's so. Here's a cool. Here's a cool thing about uh, about Volt Driver early is that this boss is not supposed to be five Volt Drivers, so it just doesn't know how to handle it. So it just dies in like two hits. Just like that. Now see if I can time this correctly. There we go. I wasn't doing it before, but if you time your charge shots correctly here, you can also one-shot kill these tentacles on the wall. And let's see if I can do this correctly. I'm gonna try and line myself up on the right spot here to get the octolith. If I do it correctly, I save like 10 seconds. Hey, I got it, nice. I can only do that on the slunge fights. At least in, like the task can do it on the, the crafted fights, but I can only do it in the slunge fights there. There are four chances of that throughout the entire run. But essentially what I did was I paused, I I held pause and like spawned on top where the octopus was and that allows me to skip a 10 second cutscene of like the camera going around the room. Pretty cool. Alright, so we're gonna go over here, load this room, and then go back over here again. And for some reason this portal just works. And this allows us to skip one of the hunters in the game. Uh, I forget his name. It's been a little bit. <laughs> Uh, the one that has like that splits off in the two in the two like forms essentially. If anyone knows in the chats, she's named Slunch. It's probably something even weirder. 
<laughs> they, they got some they got some interesting names in this game for instance we're gonna skip two hunters as next planet here and, and their name noxus and trace i was like i preface that but whatever <laughs> 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 yeah this game's kind of broken <laughs> weevil thank you that's his, that's his name yeah <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> This is Arc Terra. This is what my favorite plants do in the speedrun because we're just gonna go right down here into this room. We're gonna just charge a missile for no particular reason and whoops, I'm out of bounds. That's crazy. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So doing that just skips the fight of Noxus. We're supposed to do like immediately go into Arc Terra. We just don't do that. Then we go right over here, charge another missile and go out of bounds. And I missed an E tank, but we're just gonna get it right here, no problem. You can get the E-Tank while falling down, but it's a bit tricky. How is so, some of this stuff do, found? Do, hold on one second. Doing this real quickly allows us to go get this artifact early. And then this door's currently locked because it's supposed to like do a few things before getting in here. But in order to get out of here, we're just going to clip through the wall just like that. And then we're actually locked in this room as well because there's a bunch of like barriers around us. So we're just going to go right over here, clip through the wall just like that. Just jump in it and then there you go. We're not done yet, by the way. We're not done yet. If you thought that was if it, if thought that was cool, we got more stuff going on here. We're gonna skip another room right here. Has a lot of enemies in it, just by doing a bomb jump and then going on top of this structure right here, just like that. Gets the missile as well too. But we're not done yet. Hold hold the phone, everybody. Hold the phone, mobile users. We got one more thing we gotta do. We get another cool skip. So essentially what we're going to do now is we're going to get what's supposed to be the first iron we we, used, we we got in this run for a long time here. We're going to get it right now by just skipping this little Morphal maze, or Morphal puzzle, and getting Judicare, this this power right here. <laughs> and the now heck? the craziness... Yeah. <laughs> and now the craziness is kind of done for a bit, but that's... But yeah, there's just a lot going on in that two minutes. It's crazy. All that saves like, I don't know, like five plus minutes or so just by skipping a lot of shit. It's great. A lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of heck, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. A lot of stuff was found, by the way, by mostly one person. It was by someone named Dan, D-A-N-N, -N, and like a bunch of numbers. He, he's been glitching on this game for a long time. He found a bunch of out of bounds, like the ones you saw a second ago. It's, it's crazy. Also, this game is kind of broken as well, and like you can do some, you can do a lot of stuff in multiplayer because a lot of the maps repeat in multiplayer. So, if anyone wants to go out, go out and try this themselves, it's actually not too bad. And there, there are setups and stuff that I use for this. All right, so we're gonna get this right over here. The key flown up there for no reason. Stuffs, so yeah, exactly. It's really so, cool that someone likes this game enough to like glitch hunt this hard for it. Yeah, this game's just really broken, to say the least. Even like during multiplayer, people can just clip out of bounds, like not even like in a cheating way. They just kind of do it. Actually, that's kind of cheating in multiplayer, but like, you know. <laughs> it's just a thing you can do. It's never been... You can't patch out a DS game. You can't patch that out of a DS game, so yeah. <gasps> Yeah, so what we're gonna do now is just gonna get those three artifacts. We ran, we just unlocked the boss, but we're not gonna fight the boss just yet. Oops, I need to do this. There's a little bit of a like a, a thing to the door. I don't, I don't know what it is. Just like it, it blocks me whenever I try to go through boost through it with more falls. So I just try not to do that. Yeah, we're just gonna get out of our terror now. That's all we need is just get unlock the artifacts, and we'll we'll fight the boss later. We do this for a very specific reason. But we'll get into that one later. For now, go back to Elinos real quick. Hello? Why'd that go all the way up? That was weird. <laughs> now we can do. I can do. So, <laughs> not only is this game broken in like the out of bounds sort of way, but we have RNG Manip here that I'm about to do. So, I'm gonna go over here, unlock the door, wait for the door to close, shoot myself twice with some missiles, and then since I did it correctly, there's no enemies that spawn in this room. That can save me like 30-ish seconds because this door will be locked otherwise. <laughs> that was found recently as well. It's not a very obvious time save unless I like tell you. So I don't know. Be impressed or something. Give us some pod champs in the chat. I don't know. 
<laughs> they used to be one of the most luck based parts of the entire run there, so I'm glad that exists. That room later is still like coming to play. There's still some luck in that room later, but that's the one thing we, we can't manipulate, thankfully. All right, so like I said, lava doesn't really hurt me much. It's whatever, it's gonna go through it, no problem. And right here as well. Oh no. All right, we're not gonna go through lava this time. <laughs> not for that one. We need a little bit of health for this fight coming up in a second. Yo, thanks for the pogs, let's go. <laughs> All right, so there's three guardians right here. I missed my charge shot. Nice. Let's go. Good start. That shows good recovery there. Nice. Oh, no, I missed that one, too. All right, let's go gamer it up real quick. It's fine. Yeah, we need, to, we need to destroy... Intended. We just need to destroy all three of them. Yeah, that's actually really good. What the heck am I doing? What am I on right now? Let's go, me. Hell yeah. All right. Well, anyways, uh, right over here is another out of bounds we're gonna do. I'm gonna use a missile and just go right after this platform over here. Or right after this uh, pedestal, I guess. Hope I get this quickly. This one's a bit tricky with missiles, especially. Ah, oh, come on, please. Oh no, I went out of bounds, but I got sent too far back. There we go. It went right around that barrier. So this actually saves a few minutes because you're supposed to be going through that big room I just went through a second ago. And it's supposed to like hit a few cutscenes and stuff. Take that mushroom, by the way. <laughs> I always love that it happens. Yeah, we're, we're supposed to go, we're supposed to uh, go around that big room and like enter through the top of this room, which is in like the last area I was in a second ago. But we just kind of don't do that. <laughs> so, yeah. We get an artifact early and then we go back over here and fight this boss they're about to fight in a second we're getting shot color for it because we just have it we're not supposed to have it just yet but we have it he's over here good so as long as i don't, so as long as I don't break this chain right here it'll do massive massive damage to him he's dead just like that well yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> And there's Magmol. Magmol is like basically a grenade, except it explodes on contact. But if it doesn't explode on something, it'll just explode for a few seconds. So it's like a grenade, I guess. We used to use it for that clip it did a second ago, but it's faster to just use our missiles and then come back here. Instead of going over here and getting Magmol first. Now, instead of going around this room and like triggering a fight, we're going to not do that and just... Oops, if I can get this. <laughs> there we go. And just like scan that thing right there through the, through the bottom. And it'll just unlock this because that's what it does normally. And I'll just our our second artifact here, just like that. But instead of doing anything else here for now, we're gonna just leave. We come we'll come back to the Linos later for a very important reason. But I don't want to get into that until we come back. Trust me on that one. But it's important. Just keep that in the back of your mind. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to Artera, and we're gonna just do the boss there and escape and stuff like that, you know. Well, I say escape, but we're not we're not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of prefacing in my commentary today, but like, yeah, <laughs> it's it's a thing. We're just gonna fight the boss real quick. And let me tell you all about uh, how important a game's budget is real quick. Because apparently, apparently, uh, according to what I've heard online, the reason why uh, uh, this boss fight is repeated is because of the game's budget running out, which kind of sucks. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so there are actually four slunge fights and four credit fights in this game. However, that being said, they all behave differently. And the reason why this is, this is a thing is because this game has FMV cutscenes, and apparently that costs it a lot to make. But to be fair, they do look very good. They are very good looking. But yeah, for a long time I thought it was because like the DS card had like a limited amount of space on it, and that's why they repeat like this. But nah, it's apparently that's the reason why. It's because budgets, the budget for the game. Unfortunate, but like these fights behave differently. Like, for instance, I need, I need Judicare to actually destroy the tentacles here and 
hurt him in general. Like, that's important. I forgot to mention, by the way, but Juke is kind of like an ice power. It looks purple, but it's like, it like, it's ice, trust me. It can freeze things. And like, it bounces off of walls too, which is kind of cool. Alright, see if I got the lamp correctly. Oh, I got it twice now. Oh my god, let's go. <laughs> That's two second. That's two ten second time saves right there. Two cuts and skips, if you will. Oh, I missed. Nice. <laughs> All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're we're going to quote unquote escape from the plants. That's what we're gonna do right now. So essentially, before we even do anything else, we're actually gonna get this uh, UA tank down here as well. Behind this barrier. That's. Oh, hello. There we go. I thought I, I, thought I had the GK out, no problem. So yeah, so what we're gonna do right now is we're, we're gonna we're gonna skip another haunter called Trace. We're supposed to fight him during this escape sequence here, but we're just gonna kind of not do that. This skip is very precise, but thankfully I, I've been running this game for a while, so it's not too too bad for me anymore. This used to be like a big run killer for me back in the day. Yeah, we're gonna line myself up just like that. I should want to be a little bit more that way. Uh, yeah, that probably should be good right there. And then we're gonna do that, then go through the wall, and didn't do it right, all right. So we're gonna, we go through the wall there, but we need to actually keep everything loaded in. That's that's the idea here. And it might be good here. There we go, so I can try. See, everything's still loaded in. This is important because we're gonna just go right past this barrier and go through this door here, which is, which is unlocked in Magma, which we got in the previous plan. So that's why, that's why I would come back here, essentially. That's why we went over to Linus again, then, come, then we came back here. Yeah, we're just gonna do all this just right now. Instead of coming back instead of coming back here way later in the game. <laughs> Alright, so this boss fight's repeated again. What's what a shocker, whoa. But now we now he's ice instead of like lava. Oops. He's actually in a horrible position for me. Oops, yeah, like it's gonna be hard to actually use shock on him. Yeah, let me just use Magma. This is what you normally use here, is if you don't use shock, if you have shock coil, which, you know, every, most people wouldn't. There we go. Okay, now we're good. And see where I was. And defeating him allows to get another power, another weapon right here. This is Imperialist. Imperialist is like basically a sniper rifle. This thing is ridiculous. Yeah, it's your list of games to play. Yeah, this game is awesome. We definitely recommend it. If you have it, if you have any people who like own this game as well or like want to play it, you could use DS Download Play to play it with other people. This game does that multiplayer and it's really, really good. Trust me on that one. Like online for this game no longer exists, but like it's it's really fun with people. I played this before with people at like previous GEQ events, and I had a great time with it. Yeah, there's been a lot of people reminiscing about playing the multiplayer and talking about like which who's top tier and stuff. Yeah, I like using Stylex personally. Stylex is really cool. This room right here, we're just supposed to scan all that and then hit the switch on the wall. With Imperialist, with these Imperialist switches, we need to just be far away essentially. If we go if we go close to these, they actually close up. So can't use that. We can't do that. We can also no scope them if we're cool. But I'm not cool, unfortunately. Also, no scoping does less damage for some reason. I don't know why. <gasps> yeah, we got another artifact right here. And now we have to destroy two guardians that just pop out of the ceiling there after all, after this. Oops. Ow. Oh, I'm on, on top of a plan. That's why I'm getting hurt. Where, where's the second one? Where, where, where are you? There you are. Hi. <laughs> this just came out of nowhere. <laughs> Now, Mario's on the real DS, see? Look at that. Right there. I'm using a 3DS capture card for this game. You can also run this game on Wii U Virtual Console, but no one does, except for a Romulus in chat there who's, trying, who's been learning this game recently. But this game is also on Wii U VC. It's just a bit more awkward to play on, on the gamepad compared to just a regular DS, I feel. You know Wii U VC is very, very fast because of load times. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> yeah, I'm kind of been hunched over the whole time. That's that's just a thing you do whenever you run a DS game. <laughs> I'm looking down all the time like this. It's the classic DS posture. Yeah. Thankfully, this game is like. Or, thankfully, whenever I run a DS game, like, I always try to like put my hands on the edge of my desk here. Otherwise, it might hurt my hands, and like that's not good. Because it's important to have hands in general, just as a general thing. Your hands are very good. You want to take care of them. It's important to have hands. Shasta 2021. Wait, what? <laughs> I've I heard it I killed said. that thing. There you are. You're supposed to be dead. Wait, that portal didn't get destroyed? Excuse me? Get out of here. I swore to destroy that portal. Please. Okay, that was weird. I don't know how it didn't get destroyed. I remember the thing takes one shot of, of that Imperialist to destroy. That was really weird. <laughs> oh, hello. I just went all the way around that thing. <laughs> all right, so, this, so what So what happened there is actually not good because it's supposed to make an el uh, a, plat a platform cycle or like an elevator cycle, I guess. And like, no, I probably missed that. By the way, this mystery jump right here saves four seconds because it's supposed to destroy a pillar and it causes a four second cutscene to happen. But uh, we didn't do that. I'm gonna have to wait for I'm gonna have to wait for that platform a little bit. That's fine. No big deal. It's all good. Actually, I didn't have to wait for it for that long, but I was definitely like a cycle or two behind. But yeah, uh, we can get the third artifact in this area if we want, but it takes a little bit, and it's just kind of not worth it right now. We're just gonna escape right through that portal, which again, for some reason, just works if you if you scan it for the first time. Don't know why, but that's a thing. All right, so now we're going to go to the last planet we have not visited yet called Vesper Defense Outpost. Now, this is actually the hardest part for me, mostly because of the way we do after the boss fight. This is Metro Prime Hunter's for Nintendo DS, and he has some speed running yet. But yeah, okay, so there's a lot going on in, in VDO here. I'll call it VDO from now on. It's a lot easier. The first thing I'm gonna do is just go straight to the where the last level we've not gotten is yet, which is Ballhammer. We're gonna go straight over there and just go get that real quick. That's the idea. Right through this morph ball tunnel. Oops. There we go. Uh, bomb right there, so we save like a few seconds of waiting. All right, so we're, we're gonna just do an outbounds clip here, so you can skip like four different scans that save like 10 seconds or each or so. Oops, unless I do that. I might fall off. If that happens, it's fine. We didn't fall off. Let's go! <laughs> if you fall off there, it just spawns at the end of the room again. Unfortunately, because that took me two tries, we're actually going to miss this elevator cycle here, or this uh, platform cycle here. Now we got to wait. Just going to sit here for a bit. There we go. <laughs> and then get the missile right there, and then go right over here. Because over here, there's a few things we have to scan in order to actually, in order to actually like, beat this area. So, yeah. Now nah, this game, this is this is the only game here. There's no remake of this. And bam, we, we have to scan that in particular there to unlock like where the boss is essentially. Or, or really essentially where the last artifact is. And for some reason, you scan this from from right there. You know, you kind of scan through the wall. Don't know why, but it helps me a lot because this room has a lot of things shooting me currently, as you can tell from all the noise here. So we just, we just scan right there to avoid that. And now we're gonna do we're gonna do what I'm gonna call right now a very hard clip, but I've been getting this like first try or like in a few tries recently, like no problem. But essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the wall here with my missile and then press right, like right before I hit the wall. If I do that correctly, I clip right through his crystal here behind me and then get this artifact. I might have jinxed myself why why I prefaced it like that. Oh no. Oh there we go, third try. Alright, there we go. I was about to go, no, you commentators cursed yourself. <laughs> I absolutely did. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All 
All right, this enemy right here, for some reason, oh, it's supposed to, you know, hurt me. Come on, there we go. So I do a, full, a fully charged Geocare and then, sh and like do switch back to a regular Power Beam and that just kills them for some reason. Also, we have Imperialist, which we're not supposed to have right now on their first visit to VDO, so. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're just gonna go to the next area of a VDO here, a little, bit, a little bit early. Also, this is Silex. He's my favorite hunter in the game, he's really cool. If I miss that, that shot there on him a second ago with Imperialist, this fight would be very annoying, but thankfully I got that shot, so nice. Yeah, that's the first phase of him. Second phase, he goes in this room and then shoots me a bunch with his uh, shot cooler here. I need, to kill, I need to hurt him a few more times with uh, this, and then bam. Nice. That was actually that was actually really quick right there, but I I did I, did, I shot him in the face of with Imperialist and shot like one power beam into him and that killed him. Also during that fight he's supposed to have a cutscene of his ship coming down and like starting and have it like shoot me and stuff, but that didn't happen because I beat him so quickly. <laughs> so his ship is still shooting me, but nothing is there. That's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, I'm currently playing this on the 3S myself, so this game, the 3S is backwards compatible, I'll tell you that much. Alright, so we're, gonna, we're just gonna go all the way back here. This is where the boss portal is. And there's one more artifact over here as well, so we're just gonna go over here and fight the boss, essentially. First get the UA tank we unlocked earlier, and then right over here is an enemy. Bam. Destroying him unlocks the little, little switch. <laughs> Fun thing, if, if you morph ball into a cutscene, it just, like the whole morph ball has to play, and it also has to and like unmorph as well too. So you have to get a little bit more like ground, I guess, whenever, or a little more distance, I guess. That's, yeah. that's an actual strat, it's not, it's not swag strat. It, yeah, essentially. It's actual strat, it saves like, you gotta save the frame, that's all, that's all I'm saying. You gotta save yeah. the frames. Also, I fell off, I need to go to here again. There we go. Alright, so we're gonna fight Crowfit again. But this time we have Magmol and, and Shock Oil, which is very, very good for this, because Magmol has a giant, giant, like, blast radius. And then Shock Oil... Oh, I didn't, I didn't destroy this one here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and Shock Oil allows us just to do a lot of damage over time like this. It's very good. Then rinse and repeat for the next two phases. <laughs> Oh, that was it. Heck. There we go. Third phase is a little bit tired, so that's where we react a lot faster. Now, for some reason, on Credit 2 here, it's supposed to be a second fight, time to fight Credit Fit. But, uh, for some reason, all the eyes open up randomly. Don't know why. Just gotta be a little bit conscious of that. And there we go. <clears throat> And now it's time for the part of the run that I'm most nervous about. <laughs> Other than like, Bolt Driver earlier, earlier, but we got that, no problem. So I'm just gonna, I'm, I'll say it right now, I'm supposed to be doing, I'm actually gonna get all the health in this room first. But I'm going to, but I'm supposed to be escaping, you know, like that's, that's just what we're supposed to be doing after you defeat a boss fight. We're supposed to be doing that, but we're not gonna do that. And <laughs> in this case, when we don't do that, that's not good because there is now a balance we gotta do that if we fail, we ha we we die. So that loses like over a minute every time that happens. If we if we fail over and over again. So hopefully I get that first try. During this escape here. We'll see what happens. Essentially we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff like during this escape sequence we're not supposed to be doing. That's kind of the idea. And not unlike what we did in Arterra. But we got a little twist to this that I'll get into once we get there. But for now, we're not supposed to be going here, and this game knows this. So there's actually a barrier here. A barrier here. Hope I can get this clip quickly to get around the barrier. This is why I got all, all the health, by the way. This clip is actually big and consistent, but there we go. Third try. 
And now we're gonna destroy these enemies here because if we don't do that, uh, they'll get in our way. Let me try to do our out of bounds this second. So we're gonna skip a fight by doing this out of bounds. But if I fail this, I die. This game has coyote jumping, which essentially means I can jump midair. We're gonna abuse that so we can... Oh, I didn't, I didn't do that. Oh yeah, we're also clipping the wall here by going to the corner and then more falling. That's It's a very easy clip. Just like that. And then we're gonna go right here. Did I get that first try? No way! Nice! <laughs> Let's go! Yeah, so if I fill that jump right there, I I can die if, I, if I'm too late. Let's go! <laughs> nice! So yeah, that, that actually makes us, that makes us so we can get out of this area without fighting like a bunch of guardians, which are all very random of what they do and where they go and everything. And that loses a lot of time in this area especially, which is, which is not good. Heck so right here, so wild. it's great. I love it. And you're, you're gonna love what we do in a second here as well, because by staying this right here, by over by overriding the escape timer, we just cancel the entire escape sequence, and now we can just do this area normally instead of having to go back to the ship and then go back in here, essentially. So yeah, we're just doing this all this whole area in one visit. We're not doing this in two or three like the other like the other planets. That was freaking dope. I'm so glad I got that first try. Oh my god. That is, like that's like the hardest trick in the run, because if you fail that, you go back to the beginning of that escape sequence. And that loses like over a minute. It's ridiculous. But yeah, so this Guardian fight right here, it seems to be like a big like luck-based part of the run. I I I mentioned in particular in particular I think I'm, I remember like really, really heck talk in this fight during my SGQ 2015 run of this game. <laughs> it was, it's, it's the worst, but now we can skip it thanks to the out of bounds of this second ago, because this, this door is just open. It's just straight up open. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so we can just go over here and get the last artifact that we need and all the items in here too. I'm, I'm, I'm real, I'm real, I'm really on it by the way. Like, I, I'm glad I got that out of bounds first try. <laughs> That was the thing like that was the thing I was, was most nervous about this run. I'm glad I got that one first try. That makes me so happy. I was afraid of being stuck there for a while. But yeah, uh, there's another timer right here. I don't know if we're gonna override like the escape sequence with this timer instead, but I never tried that myself. Maybe it's a thing. I don't know. There, it's gonna go right up here. The little coyote jump right up there as well. And then, there we go. Just gonna ride the elevator to victory. Then we're gonna complete the scan while we're like off the ledge there and just fall down during the cutscene. Just save, save me a few seconds. There I am, see? <laughs> <laughs> Now, missile right there. Then right up here, we gotta destroy, we gotta get rid of this barrier. And go get our prize, aka the artifacts. For whatever reason, by the way, if that, if that escape just like, or if that like timer ran out a second ago, like everything just blows up. So, you don't want that. Oops. A little bit late on that bomb jump. There we go, that should work. Never mind. This one's a, this bomb jump's a bit higher than you think it would be. That should have to do a, a boost after the second bomb hits me. Why does this take? Why am I struggling on this of all things? Oh no. <laughs> I shouldn't be struggling on this. Hold on. What's what's going on? All right. I believe this is even hard, but I believe. Let's go. There we go. <laughs> I don't know why it took me like 10 tries. It never takes me that long. Anyways, here's what we're gonna do. We got all the artifacts, now we're just gonna go fight the boss. Now this boss fight, I could be doing some things to speed it up. However, I can soft lock the game potentially if I do that. So for the sake of for sake of this, I get a showcase right here. We're just gonna not do that. But on a PB attempt, I go for it at least. Yeah, this is we're gonna fight here is uh, the last is Slunge Four, the last the fourth Slunge fight we're supposed to do in this run, even though we've not fought Slunge Three yet. 
That's what we're gonna do right now. And the twist is that he's on the ceiling this time. Whoa. 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 <laughs> <laughs> He's also only hurt by Magmal, so we gotta use that. It's a bit tricky considering it has like a, a bit more of a curve to it when you fire it. But yeah. So during this during this part right here, what I could be doing is bombing him a bunch. I have to bomb him a certain amount of times. If I don't do that, then like this fight lasts a little bit longer, because he's gonna go around and figure eight un until like he's in this corner after this uh after this little bit of movement here. He'll keep, he'll keep doing this over and over, like for the next two phases as well, so... Yeah, I'll shot a little early. Yeah, they open up and we can, we can start hurting him, but during that entire sequence, he just, he can't be hurt. He's totally invincible. So yeah, if, if I mess up the, bomb, the amount of bombs I placed on him, I, I can soft block potentially, and that's not good, so... Yeah. In my case... <laughs> Since like I can't save right now, then especially not good. But I can show off this this cool glitch right here. Don't know why this works, but we can just kind of do this. And just to make it even more trippy, I'm gonna shoot this missile at myself from the corner of the room. There you go. That's a thing you can do for some reason. I was about to say, wait, can you hurt yourself? And and I guess you can. <laughs> I can. <laughs> I don't know why that works right there. It's just a thing. All there was morphin' on morphin' inside that doorway. <laughs> oh yeah, also I'm on the edge of the room right there as well. Just so I can uh, avoid Slunge actually hurting me or like bashing me at all. If that happens, it loses a little bit of time. So like, yeah, I just want to stay in the corner. <laughs> yeah, one more. I'm gonna use this opportunity to drink some water. Y'all should do the same as well. <clears throat> Fun fact about water, it's pretty good. Pretty delicious. Keeps you nice and, nice and healthy. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, all right, cool. And one more fight. He's gonna do the bash here anyways. I can't really avoid that one as far as I'm aware. And let's see if I can get the pause. Three out of three? Three for three? Hey! Oh, um, almost. I was close. <laughs> I thought I had for a second. I got a little faked out. All right, two for three in the pauses. That's really good still. Yeah, the cutscene you saw a second ago, I, I could I could have skipped a thousand top dots to lift there and, and pause in time, but yeah. Two for three is not bad. I never, like, getting one in a run is it's just good enough alone. <laughs> yeah, now we're gonna actually escape. That being said, though, the barrier we clipped past earlier to get even get into this area is still there. So we need, we need to actually get, we actually need to clip past it one more time. But on the reverse this time. So what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna go over here, missile jump, then pause right here, let the map, let the map load in, and bam, there we go. Don't know why that works. <laughs> you kind of just clip over the barrier and the barrier loads in along with the door in this entire area and just, it just allows us pass for some reason. And with that, we are done. We, we used to do VDO here in like three visits way back in the day. Not sure if it was three visits in my G, in my SD key run, but yeah. <laughs> now we do it all in one. That's just all one planet. And I'm very grateful for that, to say the least. That being said, now we're gonna just go rapid fire through three planets here. When I say rapid fire, this one's still a little bit long, but we've essentially done the rest of these three planets I'm about to go to. To our terror, to Celestial Archives, and to Alinos here. But we just gotta get the last artifact niche area and then beat the boss. Which this one's gonna take a little bit because it is a bit out of the way. But yeah, we're just essentially in Cleam now for most of the run. Other than, you know, the artifacts that we need. Also, we're skipping an auto scroll here. This saves like a minute both ways. Like two minutes total, I guess. I gotta be careful though, because if I go a bit too close to the center, that happens. <laughs> and I won't be on the portal here. That's not, or I don't want to be on the platform there. That's not good. Not a big deal though, we can just go right back up here, no problem. 
Yeah, I, I want to not land on the corner there or like in the middle of the area because then the auto-scroller happens. It's fine, it's fine. Oops. All right, so th this, this, uh, oops, where am I? Oh, I'm on the other side of this barrier. That, that, that'll help. Okay. There we go. This, 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 uh, puzzle right here is supposed to be doing, uh, on, on Japanese version, we can just kind of skip it for some reason. The elevator over here is supposed to unlock behind all the switches, just kind of works. But since we're in English, we can't do that. So it's a little bit of time loss compared, compared to each version of the game, but it is what it is. I see y'all talking about Metroid Dread, that cool game that I'm very, 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 very excited for. It will also be speedrunning when it comes out in the chat. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but I'm extremely excited for that game. My favorite Metroid game is Metroid Fusion, and I've always wanted Metroid 5 to exist, and I'm so glad it does, and it's coming out in like less than two weeks now. I'm so unbelievably excited for that game. Y'all have no idea. Also, I, I have full confidence the game will outsell Metroid Prime, be the, the highest selling Metroid game. I have full confidence in that. The Switch is a very popular system, and a lot of people, both casual and spearing wise, are extremely, extremely excited for that game, or just in general very interested for it, so I feel like it's gonna it'll outsell it, no problem. Oops, hello. So we're gonna, we have to fight a lot of guardians here. They're gonna just come down from the ceiling. Oh, I missed you. Oh, where are you? There you are. The one that the one here that fires Ballhammer is the worst, considering he actually moves around like this a bunch. There's one more. Where where are you? There you are. All right, we're good. <laughs> Couldn't agree more, Shadeway. Couldn't agree more. One of the, it's one of the, one of the things that drew me to that game. Not like not against a kid or anything. My parents bought it for me, but like just in general for repeat playthroughs, I guess, and just spearing it. It's just so much. It's so much fun and like. I love just, it's, it's essentially a horror game is what it is. It's, it, it literally is one, it's great. The SDX is just so terrifying. There's a UA tank just sitting in the, in the middle there for some reason, just kind of floating, just chilling there, it's great. And okay, now we're gonna just go fight the boss. That's all we're gonna do. It's just right back over here. Multiplayer this game someday. I'm down to play multiplayer if you ever come to like, I guess like an in-person event of some sort. <laughs> Never GQ's back, I guess. If y'all if y'all want, very down for that. Yeah, we're gonna fight Cryfid Four right here. This gimmick is now he moves around. Whoa! <laughs> That's all it is. Nothing more than that. Oops. There's one more here. Yeah, I, I saw you. I missed this one here earlier. There we go. Oops. Oh no. Please kill. Please kill. Nice. All right. Good. The first phase that crystal stays out for a bit longer than it stays out for for a while. So I think that's not real much of a problem. And oop. I should be right there. Yeah. Okay. Good. One more. Nice, good fight, good fight. No problem there. All right, so yeah, now we're gonna escape once again. The next like three areas are gonna be essentially the same except for the last one, it's got a little twist to it. But we, we're just we're just cleaning up the rest of what we need here. We got, we got our Autolith and we're just gonna go. Thanks LPG, let's go. <laughs> All right, I use a touchscreen name, by the way. Yeah, that's how you gotta do. You can't use anything else for this run. There's a lot of really fast aiming you gotta do, like quick snapping and all that. 
I do also use mostly the art button for boosting. He's in boost ball. You can use a touch screen for that as well, but it's not as good for me. Can't spam it as easily, at least from my experience. All right, just gonna do a bunch of jumps right here. So we use a we use a portal twice to escape from here before. Now this is actually how you're supposed to do it normally now. There's also supposed to be a guardian fight below there, but since we kind of did this area of order, we don't really do that guardian fight. I think it's supposed to happen during a the, the escape sequence during Trace. I think it's supposed to, like, after we fight Trace, I mean. But uh, we didn't do that. Yeah, that's how you're supposed to escape normally from Arterra. We don't have another portal to use there because we used all the other ones already. All right, back to Celestial Archives. After like an hour of other stuff in the run, now we're back to the first area of the game. And we're gonna just clean it up real quick. AKA, we're gonna get the last artifact, which is like really close to where we spawned in here, and then fight the boss, which is also very close to us. Oh, and also Knee Tank, that's, that's there too. The fun fact that I learned at one point is that if I destroy his enemy here and then destroy this one here, a bunch of different, uh, a bunch, a new, a new type of enemy, the, like a new type of enemy looks like that one spawns in and they can actually like knock me back off this platform. So I don't want that to happen. That's not good. But I learned that the hard way one time. Okay, I used to call this section plot skip because I can't read Japanese, but uh, it's not English now. We don't want to skip the Japanese version anymore, so RIP. Rip that joke. It's over. <laughs> Dang. You no longer do plot skip. Because I've spoken English my entire life. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Alright, E-Tank over here. This is a lot of this is there's a lot of elevators gotta wait for here. Nothing more than that. Up here is where the boss is as well. It's only hurt by a battle hammer. Which is why we couldn't defeat this one earlier, because we only had Volt Driver and Shock Load earlier. So yeah, there we go. RIP plot skip. Yeah, uh, if anyone has any questions at all, like by the way, right now about this run or just for me, I guess, uh, let me know. Let me know right now. Cause like this part is a little bit it's pretty chill for bits. That's gonna be a lot more intense in, the, in like the last plant, but th th this thing was pretty chill. Yeah, and if uh, people are interested, what should they do to learn to, to run this game? Uh, we got a Discord. Uh, so you can find it on the Spirit Uncommon page for this game. We do need make more resources for this run, because there's a lot of out of bounds, a lot of stuff's not entirely obvious. But yeah, and we do have a Discord, and like I'm always in there like helping people out. It's, Whenever people ask like to, on how to learn this run, they have Dan as well too. He's been running this game forever. I think Verilux as well has been helping out, help out people too. He's they helped me out a lot of like relearning this run especially. Shout out to Verilux, current, current local holder for this game. What got me interested in running this game? I I saw someone named Am Hype way back in the day run this game in the the Metroid Marathon. I think it was on the Team Ludendi channel, and I thought it was really cool. And I had just been it at the time. And there's like a lot of really broken stuff in the run, so I was like, this is really flashy and awesome. I want to learn this. And like, this is my first year speed running as well, so like, I was tr I was just trying to find things to run. So, yeah. Ah, oh, I missed that one too. I was a little far far back. It's all good. Yeah, that's why I got into this game way way back in the day. Shout out to Aaron, aka M Heights, aka I forget what he goes by these days. He goes by a different name these days, but. Yeah, shout out to you. You're 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 cool. <laughs> I played Fusion. Why is it good? Fusion, uh, it's got it's got a lot of horror elements. You don't a whole lot of horror elements you don't see in like like other Nintendo games a lot of time. Like for instance, the SAX is just a creature that is literally like infecting your power suit that just ru roams around the entire game trying to kill you, which is like you know kind of dark already. And there's like, and like also the sound design in that game is one of the best I've ever heard in any video game. Especially for like the system it's on, the GBA. Like, it's incredible. 
And that game's just really fun to play in general. It's just a really solid 2D platformer outside of that too. And the plot's amazing. Like the story of that game and all the dialogues that Adam, ha Adam has, like it's just, it's, it's really good. It's something that hooked, that hooked me a lot as a kid, to say the least. And now I play it today as an adult. I also do randomizers for that game. All right, I'd be a little careful there, thankfully. If I die, if I die in this room again, then well, I have to do, redo the escape sequence, which isn't as bad right now, but I still don't want to do that. I also do fusion speedruns. I do do fusion speedruns. Recently, I've been doing randomizers for. I just got into that recently, but I ran 100% recently at uh, Midway Speed Fest about a month ago, which was I think kind of the first in-person speedrun event in, like over a year and a half or so. It was really fun. I did like some of the best commentary I've ever done, like ever in a marathon during that run. It was great. But yeah, also, so more recently as well, other, talking about other metric games I run, are I've run Sam Returns. I ran that in SGQ 2018, but more recently I've been running 100% for that game. And I plan to spin that to Age of the Q coming up. That run is very broken. <laughs> like, is it's a busted 100% run, because there's like, Four or five different ways to go out of bounds in that game. It's crazy. Yeah, and actually, if I can plug something real quick, go for uh, it. HTQ 2022 online submissions are open right now until October 3rd. So, just like Shasta, if you're thinking about submitting, definitely like do that, because yep. it's way better the more submissions we get, because then there's awesome. more variety, there's more cool things that can be shown off like this. Yeah, I'm submitting this game personally to HTQ. I, I can't wait. <laughs> Uh, volunteer submissions are also open, and if you want to help from home, uh, there are remote uh, opportunities open as well. Yep. Get your, submission, get your submissions in, everybody. Get your submissions in. I personally did mine this morning. Or most of mine. I have, like, a couple nice. left. I, I'm going to do mine, like, the final day, because I need to still get there. Uh, Sam's turns 100% time, but yeah. All right, so that segment is pretty chill, but now we're going to do some, some cool things, such as... Uh, skip this entire morph ball maze over here. I fell down and messed, messed up like my first time attempt, but there we go. Now we got it this time. We just kind of unmorph right here and it just kind of works. And then go up here and there we go. We just kind of center ourselves through, through the tunnel here using the missile and then clip ourselves out with another missile and bam. By the way, we're not supposed to be staying up in this area. So a few of the textures look a little bit glitchy and it's also laggy because of that. But doing this saves like two minutes and it's just the most annoying thing in the entire game. Because if you mess up at, at all in the Morph Ball maze, you just straight up die. You can eat a squish and it's over for you. So yeah, I'm glad we skipped that. <laughs> and now we're on to the final normal boss fight in the run. Not the final boss of the game. We're, we're almost there. We're very close. But we're on to Credit Fit 3. That's, that's where we're on. This is, this is the final boss fight in this run. Other than the final boss. That was confusing, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not the final final boss, it's like the, the final normal boss that you fight. It's the pre-final yeah. boss. The pre-final boss, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, someone asked about playing other M before playing Fusion. Uh, you, can, you can if you want. The story of that game is, like, people don't like the story of that game. I did find the game very fun to play, at the very least, when I played it. So if y'all want to do that, like, by all means, it is a fun game to play outside of, like, one mechanic I don't like. Which is just, like, aiming at aiming your Wiimote at the screen and actually use missiles, which I don't like. That's kind of whack. So it's a 2.5D game, but whatever. <gasps> that was, like, the one thing I didn't like about it, though, in terms of the gameplay. But the story itself, like, yeah, people... People... That's one of the reasons why it's, it's the most, like, disliked Metroid game, is because of the story and, like, the way they present Samus. So it's not essential to play before it, but there's some things that connect together between the games. So that, that is the thing, I guess. Yeah, when I was setting up this showcase, I was I was considering other M as part of it, and I was looking at it going, man, this is, this is pretty it's pretty wild. There's a lot of things going on here. Yeah. <laughs> this is also this is also one of the games people don't like as much. Mostly because of the story mode, because like of the repeated bosses and all that. But like, and because it's, it's confusing to navigate this game, weirdly enough. There's, there, there's, the game doesn't do a good job of telling you where to go, mostly. It's like, it actually gets kind of confusing in a way. But like, 
there, there's some fans of this game. This game is really fun to play. It's got some great mechanics to it, and like, it's got its charm. It's got a lot of really cool things about it in general that I like. There's a bunch of new characters introduced, which is like not usually a thing in Metroid games for the most part, outside of like a few different, like aside of some games like Fusion or Prime 3, I think introduces a few of them. Or the Prime series in general, but yeah, it's neat. Also right up here, uh, it's a missile tank. That's why I'm going up here. Then right back down here, we're just gonna, just gonna leave. We. <laughs> I, lo I love that so much. <laughs> Get flung across the room. All right, so this next room right here, uh, there's there could be potentially no enemies in it, or it can be like a guardian, or like a, a hunter, or two guardians, two hunters, both a guardian and a hunter, any, any, any of that sort of thing there. Or it can be nothing, and if there's nothing, it saves me time. Nope, there was a hunter though. Rip. I think it's just one hunter, considering there's no lag or anything. Yeah, it's just Silex. Hi, Silex. I miss. Thanks for lying up in front of me. A fun thing about this game is that enemies, enemies and bosses like guardians and hunters, they'll, they'll just line up in front of you if you stand still. It makes it makes killing them very easy. Especially considering for this weapon right here, I need to get a headshot to actually one shot kill. So that makes things way easy. They'll just go up in front of you in, in like the same spot every time. But yeah. So the reason why we did Alinos last year is because this is where you unlock the final boss. This room right here. And doing so, we actually cancel the escape sequence. That's that's also a fun little side effect of that. There used to be a lot more relevance back when we were on Japanese because the portal we used earlier to, to skip Weevil, uh, it's just unlocked for some reason on Japanese during the escape sequence. And that saves, that saves us a lot of time, but now it's not. Which is whatever. It still saves us time to do that. We do have to get a few more items on the way out of here. We got uh, a UA tank down here, then E tank on the way out. Which, unfortunately, using the English route actually adds a bit more luck because on the way out of here, we have to potentially fight like a guardian or two. Or we can fight none of them, but the game is usually not that nice to me. Yeah, this is like the acid tunnel. We're just getting hurt constantly, and there's health everywhere to help us, thankfully. Then, we wait, wait for it. Wait for it. We. <laughs> but wait, like there's more. That. It's not is very it, precise. Is it just, is it just, you hit the button and go. <laughs> yeah, we just, we just we just hit the button and go. Thankfully, oops, I fell down though. We just gotta do that again. We. All right, we're good. <laughs> Oh, hello. <laughs> All right, gotta do that again. <laughs> All right, now we're good. <laughs> I love that. All right, now we're just gonna go out this way. We're, we use both the portals already during an escape, so we, we just have to do this normally now. We can't, for the reason the portal back there doesn't work anyways. But also we need the, the tank over here too, so there's that. We're gonna do one more out of bounds to get out of here though, considering there's still a barrier around that, that morph ball tunnel we're supposed to use normally. So we're just gonna do this to get out of here. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay, took a little bit. Nice. Oops. No, the ramp, the final boss. That's over. <laughs> okay, we're good now. And thankfully there's no guardians in this room, so we just get out of here. I got lucky. Nice. Now we just leave. We're done. Time to go ahead and skedaddle on out of here and go fight the final boss. I don't, I don't really like saying sk skedaddle so much. I've said it a few times this run. That's a good word. A very good word. I agree. <laughs> but yeah, so getting all the Autolus in the game unlocks this area here called Oubliette. 
and we're just gonna go fight the boss in there. All it has in here is one E tank and then just Doria, the found boss. That's all it is. The cool thing though is that in this cat this category called all items, we actually fight the second phase of the final boss, which because there's an item we have to get in there, it actually counts eight percent. So yeah. We're gonna go do that. Diddle I'm just thinking dead flyers for some reason. Howdy diddly diddly neighbor. We gotta skiddle diddly daddle out of here. <laughs> Anyways, that's the final that's the final item of the run other than like the item we're gonna get there in the final boss fight. So yeah. But what's the personal record for this game? My PB for this game is a 114.12. Currently third place on leaderboards by like a mid, I wanna say. I used to have a record in this game back in the day, but then uh, and a bunch of stuff was found and I didn't keep up with it. So, um, so like Dan took it back and then I think Verilux took it and he still has a record as well. He's currently trying to improve it to a, one, uh, a 110 as well. Currently at like a 111, 30 something I wanna say. Oh cool, uh, my, my M didn't switch, there we go. So the boss is trying to hurt us right now over here, but I need to hit all these switches on the wall first. This unlocks the second phase of the boss. That's that's what this does. So we're just gonna do this first. We could do this while fighting the boss as well, but we're not gonna do that right now. Just because I am more confident doing this. He's during a marathon. There we go. And now we're gonna do some manipulation on him. If we go up close to him like this, he'll try to hit us, and for some reason that just kind of advances his phase faster. Don't know why, but it's very good. So each each different color of that Gorya turns into corresponds with the weapon it's supposed to be using. In this case, Magmol is pretty good for killing him fast. Uh, so so is uh, Shock Coil and Peerless. Jukar is as well, but like I already got him up to that purple phase when I got to him, so I might as well switch to Magmol first. Yeah, he starts off with a uh, Volt Driver and then Battle Hammer, like yellow then green. And those are very slow, so we don't want to use those for the team Goria. All right, so now we're gonna use Shock Oil. Shock Oil is pretty good for this. I don't want to go too close to him because he can't hit us, and like you saw earlier, it advances the phase when that happens. So you don't want that to happen. It can also happen if you destroy the arm at the wrong time, which is just random, but it's not very common, thankfully. Yeah, we're gonna try and not break this one shock color right here because it's very fast if we do that. As you can tell from that first phase, he has a lot of health whenever this, this ball does pop up, so the faster we're gonna feed him, the better. Yeah, also whenever these things come at me, they uh, they can break the shock color very easily, so it might take a little bit, like a little bit longer. Uh, come on, please. There we go, nice. And then here's the final phase right here. He's gonna, turn, he's gonna turn red for Imperialist and just gonna destroy him immediately. Check this out. Bam, one shot. Bam, two shots. <laughs> and then this takes seven hits. There we go, phase one done. Now, phase two is very random, so hopefully this doesn't go too, too awry, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is Goria too. He kind of floats up above, above us like this. Yep, he, he, he absorbed all of the the hunters and stuff in the game, and now he's like all powerful or whatever. And the only defeat him is using the Omega Cannon right here, the final, the final weapon of the game. It's also very OP in the multiplayer, and thankfully you don't spawn in with it anywhere. You just kind of like get it. Kind of spawns it randomly, so it's not like super super bad, but it's still very very good in multiplayer. Yeah, it's the only thing that can destroy him, so we're gonna use it. It's also only thing it's also the only weapon we can use right now. We can't switch to anything else at the moment, so yeah. Time is coming up after we defeat him, by the way. It's like once we get to the credits, that's when time that's when time is. So we're gonna hope that he doesn't like teleport to the bombless area. That can happen, and it loses me a lot of time because I have to climb back up if that happens. 
It's looking good so far though. One more should do it. There you are, perfect. All right, time is very soon. And... Time. Nice. Sweet, that's what I got as well, 1849. Nice. That was a really good run. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad the stuff I was nervous about when like, was like first try. <laughs> that, that's most of what I care about here. I'm very glad that, I'm very glad that like, I didn't get stuck on like one part because that can happen easily. <laughs> Yeah, this run's the... very, this run's very broken, and like sometimes it's too broken for its own good, because like sometimes it's losing over a minute if you mess it up. So yeah, all the out of bounds seem well. to go pretty well. So. Yeah, thankfully. I will, I will really quickly as well after the credits are done confirm that to get all the items. I'm pretty positive I did, but yeah. First, we gotta see the rest of this. This game does have an in-game time system. But that being said, just like the normal spear in this game, it is absolutely broken. But for some reason, if you pause, unpause, then pause again within, like before a second passes on the game time, you just, it just doesn't count. So you can just keep doing that over and over again throughout the entire run if you want. Yeah, that and sounds it's just, awful. It's awful. <laughs> this game used to go by IGT, but we don't do that anymore for obvious reasons. <laughs> that was found a while ago when uh, Memory tasked this game. Like back in like 2016, 2017, something like that. It's a very good task. You also watch it. I was going to say, I that she... sounds like a task discovery with it. <laughs> yeah, I think she beats this game in like 45 minutes or something. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, let, let me let me show you all real quick. Also, this is one reason why I used to go by IGT as well, because this game actually has seconds, but doesn't count, doesn't pop up during the credits, and I don't know why. But yeah, that's my fastest right there, 106.03. My current PB is that I popped off that run. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we use this file and there we go, yeah. So nine missiles, 12 UA ex expansions, and seven, seven U tanks. That's what we got, so perfect. We did it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, All right so any yeah. more shout outs? Uh, shout outs to Verilux once again for, he's currently a local, local holder for this game. Uh, he's currently also running it too, trying trying to get a uh, 110, the first ever in this run. So uh, feel free to follow him if you want. Shout out to Dan as well for finding a lot of the glitches in this run. <laughs> he literally found like most of the out of bounds in this game like way back in the day, and like he also found that he also found like out of out actually he found that how to actually get out of the unload area in uh, when we were doing. I can't, I can't, I can't think. Vol driver early that that trick way way earlier in the run. He found out to get out of there, which is like the longest. It was like kind of the holy grail this run for a long time. So shout out to that. Also, if y'all want to follow me, I've, I'll be doing a lot of Metro experience in general. Link at the Metro Dread in like less than two weeks from now. I've been doing that all month, but I'll be doing mostly Sanford turns 100% runs because I want to spend the age of the queue soon. It's so like. If y'all want to see another broken, broken as heck with a hundred percent speed run, uh, yeah, feel free to follow me on Twitch. It's just twitch.tv slash MR underscore chat. Richard is linked in chat. There we go. But yeah, if y'all want to see more of this game as well, I'll, I'll run this game occasionally too, especially if it gets into, into, into Age of the Q, but we'll see what happens with that one. Only time will tell. Yeah, I think that's it for me. If y'all want to go watch some Metro Prime Tokos from Nintendo GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Metroid Prime Showcase. Next up, we've got a game that I've always thought was pretty interesting. I, I like watching runs of it, even though I've never actually tried to run the game. I'm definitely nowhere near good enough to do it, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, Metroid Prime 2, 100% by Aaron Explosives. Aaron, you can go ahead and take it away. Yo, I'm Aaron, and I sometimes play this game. <laughs> Not as much as I used to, but occasionally. I've got, um, I've got Dark Zero and Diggle commentating. They're pretty important people in the, this game's randomizer community, so I guess we introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Diggle. Uh, I go by she, her. And also, yeah, I do run this game on occasion as well, but... <laughs> it 
It's not actually that bad to run this game, I promise. Uh, you know the game is hard when coding a randomizer for it is easier. <laughs> and this game... I promise it isn't that this bad. This game is... It's just really punishing. More so than the first game. Uh, it's got like similar movement tech, although not as heavily optimized. Uh, like, dude, this game can definitely be pushed further down than, uh, than the first game can. But some of the tricks are just so much more dangerous. There's a lot more places you can die. You have to be more careful. The soft locks and the crashes are more common as well, so you have to have knowledge to know how to avoid those. Just general things like that that you don't really have to know in the first game. Uh, I guess, yeah, already I'm gonna count us down. Three, two, one, go. Oh. Yo. See, so yeah, we're, we're playing we're playing a hundo here. We're, we're going to get all the items. Um We fought cheating, you know. Too much too much cheating. Oh. I should probably have the Discord preview up huh? <laughs> instead of watching the stream. That's that a good is idea. at least 30 seconds behind. So, uh the start of this game, um you start off with some items that Samus had from her previous adventure. Um there's um five items total. She has five missiles. Um, the boost ball, the spider ball, uh, morph ball bombs, and space jump. Um, she also has like things like charge beam and morph ball, but those are like basically things you always have in this game. And once uh, Samus is done with this tutorial section, she's gonna lose her items. Uh, it's possible to skip it using out of bounds. Um, I'm gonna be going out of bounds anyway, but um, I won't be skipping the item loss sequence because there's an item um, that you cannot get um, currently unless you lose your items. So that's why I'm. But we are doing shenanigans, other shenanigans that you have to do out of bounds. The portal, it, it, you can clip in bounds to the room with the portal with the item loss cutscene. Um, but if you don't transition to the room, um, it doesn't activate. So you can do something really goofy. Also, yeah, welcome out of bounds. Um, did you know that boxes? Oh, come on. This box, every room is in this box, and it's called Aether. Um, when you walk out of Aether, you have a three frames to input a jump um, in a 60 FPS game. So, Ocarina Time Frame Perfect. Um, I'm gonna be a little more careful here. <laughs> I think you got it. a bunch of random spots in the wall. I don't think I got it, actually. I think I didn't go far enough. So, there's a, there's a bomb cover that, um, that hides a missile in a tunnel. Uh, normally you can't get it once you um, go through this portal because I don't have bombs anymore until later, but um, if I do manage to get this missile early, I'll be able to save 20 seconds later in the run. Alright. Also, another thing about Aether, you, you float up very slowly when you're in it. Um, that's important sometimes. Oh, uh, I did actually get it. Okay. Oh, nice. nice. So this missile here uh, is only visible or collectible after you the room changes uh, layers after losing your items. Echo is kind of full of this, but like after your first visit okay. room, it changes somewhat. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times, their items are only in the later version of the room. You never see this normally on your casual play because they're not part of the flow. Uh, yeah. it, it matters a lot for a speedrun. For all the things oh, we're going gosh. to do to this game, um, it, it is pretty well put together for a casual player. Um, just when you start picking at the edges, um, it unravels pretty hard. Hello, come on. Thank you. <laughs> so right there I did something called the slope jump, where you like walk up a slope and jump along it to gain some more height. Um, by doing that I was able to get on top of this crate and uh, while it's moving during this cutscene, I'm still on top of it, so I can use it to climb the room a little faster. It doesn't save as much um, uh, RTA, like real time, as it does in-game time, uh, because the game timer that we optimize the game by isn't counting during cutscenes, such as this one right here. It only counts frames where I have control of the character, uh, but it still saves some time nonetheless. Mm -hmm. It's also just you're riding a box in a cutscene, so you know, it's pretty, pretty swag. Yeah, it is pretty funny. So right now we're just going to the vanilla first missile launcher. Um, 
You can duplicate it. I don't think Aaron is going to. No, I won't be duplicating it, so I'm sure. And this category has, I think it's the source requirement, so you have to pick up at least one copy of every item. Um, and I think older Hundo routes did pick up this missile or, or duplicate it. Um, it yes. exists in both. There's a cutscene, and um, the missile crate exists in both layers before and after the cutscene. Um, but yeah, we don't duplicate it anymore. I think the wall crawl, the item loss uh, skip and wall crawl is why we don't do the dupe anymore. Yeah, you only want 10 missiles um, after this section, so it's not worth getting 15. Uh, there is something interesting that while hitting that cutscene that I just hit before getting this missile does. It raises um, that gate over there. I'll just show it off. Um, that gate isn't there until you watch that cutscene, and I do have to go scan that gate to move it down later, but um, I just scan it down and just take the cutscene trigger instead, instead of having to uh, do the trick to get around that cutscene. I just prefer doing that. I don't like duplicating the missile launcher. Yeah. Also, that, that gate looked like it was green, but that, that's a lie. It's actually a purple gate in disguise. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> this saves, like, a couple seconds. It's like 20. Oh. You do it properly. But it's also a really awkward slope jump. I did this, like, first try earlier when I was playing this morning, and now it's spot bugging me again, apparently. Okay, there we go. Oh, nice. That still save time. <laughs> yeah. Um, set up for one time, one second time for uh, saving. Two hours. <laughs> that's another slope jump. That's the same trick I mentioned before to get on top of a crate. That one is just like, like, notably quite difficult and annoying to do. Most yeah. of the slope jumps that you do without the space jump boots are finicky because you don't have a second jump to make it more lenient. Mm -hmm. I know in Prime 1, um, when you pick up Space Jump, your first jump just gets more height added to it. Is that still a thing in Echoes? Uh, it's not the first jump, it's like the unmorph out of the, the bomb jump. I don't think the jump has actually changed. Okay. Oh, did I not get a missile drop? Good game. Alright, well, I guess I only have two missiles. <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> you, ideally, you'll get more missiles for Dark Alpha Splinter, but I guess we get to take the slower out here. Yeah, I'm only, I have to keep one missile after the fight as well, so I'm only going to be uh, using one missile on this guy. So I'll just um, find a good opportune moment to use it. Nice. <laughs> uh, Dark Alpha Splinter wants it. Uh, earlier, when playing uh, Reload during the wall probably, which is a uh, term for walking out of bombs, uh, if she instead of she bombing the wall for the slot and she should point her over and continuing, she would have skipped losing the items. That's something you, you do in almost all other categories of the game. But like we mentioned, uh, since we need to lose the items, to get the item, that's the only reason we don't do it in this category. Yeah. And someone mentioned like if you had some kind of layer manipulation like Skyward Sword, yeah, we would be able to avoid doing that. But we will also be able to break a lot of other, other things in this game. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Bellator said the jump, the first jump is changed. I don't know if that's just a prime one thing then. Interesting. I don't want to be wrong, so <laughs> that's correct. That's yeah, no one wants to be wrong on the internet. No one wants to be wrong. I've never been wrong, not once. So here, um, quick summary of the lore of this game. I just met Umos. It's the Luminoth guy over here. Uh, that's the name of their species. Um, they're nearly extinct. Umos is the only uh, alive Luminoth left that's not in like, cryogenic stasis. And they were driven to near extinction by the Ing, which is the race of creatures that comes from an alternate, alternate dimension of their planet um, called Aether, known as Dark Aether. Uh, and the Ing uh, came to the Light Aether and stole their energy sources from their, like, different regions, and Umos asked Samus to, uh, take the energies back from their temples in the three, uh, regions of the game in order to, like, save the planet from... I don't even really know. I don't remember what, what happens to the planet. Like, does it get consumed or something? I don't, I don't remember. I think it just gets replaced by Dark Aether. Yeah, so, something like that. I don't remember. 
the, the ing are rude, so we don't we won't we don't like that. Yeah. We don't like the ing. So right here I'm gonna pick up my first um, energy tank. Uh, these are pretty important items in this game. I mean, if you don't have energy tanks in this game, it's pretty bad. <laughs> There's mm. a reason why this one is so easy to acquire. Yeah, Dark Aether's atmosphere is very dangerous. So now, um, once I have the, now that I have the Violet Translator, which I got from Yunos, um, from the Temple Grounds, uh, Great Temple, I'll be able to scan this, um, gate to access the first area of the game, Aegon Wastes. Mm -hmm. Do you like sand? Definitely like sand. Well, um, it's everywhere, so... So the only thing I'm going to be doing in Aegon, um, I'm not going to be collecting the energy, like I said, and returning it from the Dark World. I'm only going to be coming here to Gab um, four um, major upgrades, um, two of which I already had at the start of the game that I lost, and two of which are new to this game and are very important. Uh, known as Dark Beam, Light Beam. I guess we'll go over like what they do later on. They go pew, and they, they hurt. They go pew, yeah, they hurt, and they, they open special doors that are otherwise very annoying to skip. <laughs> Shout out to Max on no Dark Beam. So well, here's another slope jump to jump on top of this um, pillar here, and I just dash off this object to skip uh, climbing the room in like the intended way. There's another kind of annoying slow jump here, so let's get up here. Come on. If yeah. Nice. Why GameCube and not the Wii version? The Wii version is a very different game from the GameCube version with the control scheme differences. And they also patched out a lot of things. Yeah, they patched out a lot of the like actual like non-specific um like non-area specific glitches. Um, the Japanese version of this game um, changed a lot of stuff, um, but not like actually like exploit related. Um, it patched like some minor things like in rooms, but not like actually like movement uh, tricks. Like for example, that trick I just did right there is called an extended dash, where essentially like, I jump in the air and I do a frame perfect bunny hop off the ground in order to like keep all my speed from the dash and make it to that door. Uh, you can still do stuff like that on the Japanese GameCube version of the game, but there are some, like, small things with, like, bosses and, like, like just, like, random objects that they decide to fix that didn't work intentionally. But the Wii version fixes, like, tons of the movement, uh, tricks. Almost all of them are gone. Yeah. Uh, so it's basically a completely different game. Uh, so this is Bomb Guardian. Uh, I was just rolling around at the start of the fight because, um, the fight doesn't actually start until a few seconds after the... The, um, the little warm guy comes out of the ground. Yeah, it's just a timer. And becomes infested by the ing. So this boss has like some interesting health mechanics. Um, it actually doesn't even have more health on hard mode, where most enemies have about double health. Um, but the way uh, the way Bomb Guardian works is every time its health goes underneath an interval of 75 or sorry 25 percent, um, its mouth will stop being vulnerable, and you'll have to shoot its tail again. So, I shoot an uncharged shot, which does 2 damage, and a missile, which does 30 damage, in order to bring it to um, just above 75% of its HP. And then my 50 damage um, charge beam will bring it down to just under 50% of its HP. So even though the cycles are supposed to end after 25%, so basically once I reach 75%, I'm able to end it after I reach um, past 50, so at 49%, and then just a missile and charge beam will bring it down to zero. So I'm able to do the fight in two phases instead of four. Yep. It's nice. And um, if anyone's curious, um, this is the GameCube version of the game. Like we said, I'm playing on the American version and TSCU. If you play the um, European version, it's almost like nearly identical to this game with like a few changes. There's like only one that matters for 100% speedruns, and it's like literally whether or not you can break a rock with the boost ball. In the PAL version, you have to break it with bombs, so there's like a one second difference. Um, I'm also playing this game on a uh, on, on an actual disc on the Wii. The Wii has slightly faster loads than GameCube, so 
Oh, come on, move. Uh, is this game, when you play this game on GameCube, is it more prone to crashing like Prime 1 is, or...? Uh, for my experience, no. When I actually got okay. my GameCube um, this summer, I did a, a whole playthrough of any percent on the GameCube, and it worked fine. Okay. It was just kind of slow. <laughs> yeah, as far as I were, the issue with the first Prime 1 version is just never in the game, actually. Yeah, okay. So now we are going to Dark Aether to um, fight nothing, as it were. Um, but first we gotta go uh, deal with this room. Kill some dudes, activate a bomb slot, blow up exactly two sand things. I don't even know what these are. They won. They, they, they rotate, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> they want My missiles it. don't want to work. Hello? They, they want you dead. That should be enough, Still right? got some yeah. broken missiles. <laughs> Better fix it. My, uh, my L button also, like, let go of the pirate on the left at the start, and then like, I couldn't switch targeting to it. Oh, no. So you're supposed so, to, uh, go through a fairly lengthy morph ball puzzle here. Um... But... And I, like, break these three sand pedestals. I, I don't know what they are, but you gotta break them. Except you don't have to break all of them. The only one you need to break is the last one. That activates the portal. We just have to activate the first one since we don't have space jump. Uh, you don't actually have to activate the first one. There is a really minor time save. I'm sorry, you, like, you only have to activate it. the third one. Yeah, the and the third first one. one you activate because it's faster. Easier. Easier, yeah. There, yeah. You can skip it. It's just so stupid. <laughs> is to... it like a really good 3BSJ? No, it's not a BSJ. You go up the, the elevator, and then instead of bombing the, the block, you, like, roll around it and unmorph onto the ledge. It's bad. It's, like, not worth doing. I don't think anybody <laughs> even goes for that. I didn't even know about it, so yeah. So, oh, does the game... Look, I can actually add a deinterlacing filter. I actually forgot to do that because of the new versions of, of OBS. I can do that soon if that's um, necessary. My, my deinterlacing is normally fine. If it's something that I should fix, then just let me know. I'll add it on. So, uh, that point, the, just being able to shoot the third uh, target uh, is something that was fixed on the Japanese version. So here's the most oh, fearsome on. boss in the game. Nothing. I think that's I'm a little I'm not hitting high. it. I'm not hitting it. Hold on. I just... Yeah, there we go. That's better. Yeah. I have to hold I shot 10 missiles at it, so that's 800, which means I need six charge shots after this. Yeah, this is a really scary nothing, so we're just gonna make sure it's dead. I gotta shoot a lot of ammunition there, because this, this nothing has too much health. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, the interlacing uh, is, well, I mentioned it was, it was something on my end, I can, I can fix it. Yeah, My video or something soonish for a transition. The portal even. Uh, six, six, two. This boss that I'm shooting has um, 1100 HP, so I just um, do some quick maths with my variable missile counts into this fight to know how many times I need to hit it. Actually, I lost count explaining that. Just to do one more. <laughs> That's probably good that enough, be right? Enough. Surprise, the nothing was actually uh um, yeah, that was perfect. The jump guard. This boss Yeah, this boss um has like phases where it's invulnerable and things like that and I'm not a fan of it, so Yeah, it's really annoying. It it just jumps around, it reflects shots. You don't wanna you wanna you don't want to do this fight. And the, the developers just left it there. It's even capped, you can't kill it until you start the fight. So you don't yeah, have to worry about the, overdoing uh, it. It wasn't even the, uh, the spawn point I was shooting. I was like physically shooting the boss that just like happened to be at that location like before it um, was used. They just made it invisible and the uh, hitbox four is still lie there, still active. It's really funny. That is um, a thing that doesn't happen on the Japanese version of this game and yep. all the Wii versions. That was also fixed. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pick up some health. Actually, so... no, I'm not. Why? Why would I do that? That bomb, we activate that bomb slot for, um, like, two hours from now. 
It's a very common theme in this game. You do something that saves time much later in the run. Usually in the cleanup, which it, right now is like two hours later. Yep. Yeah, we have Space Jam now. It's, a, it's still a very good item. Not quite as busted as in Prime 1. They um, added a sideways speed cap, so you can't just eat yourself everywhere. Um, easily, at least. You can still, still do extended dashes to simulate Prime 1 dashing still. Um, and yeah, it's still a very good item. Oh, nice. I actually got that hey. BSJ. Oh nice. Yeah, I am saving. <laughs> you didn't you did not save I didn't I did not save. <laughs> Great. A BSJ is a uh, bomb space jump, which is great because you can do a BSJ um without bombs or space jump for the bombless spaceless bomb space jump. Um, so this is my friend uh, Robert. I'm gonna be using Robert to go out of bounds because when the morph ball's in Robert's mouth during one of its attacks. Oh shoot, I screwed up the setup. Great, I'll do the backup now. But uh, there's no collision checking for when the morph ball is stuck in Robert's mouth, so I'm just gonna be uh, exploiting that to go out of bounds. I haven't done this backup in a while. Actually, it goes okay. Yeah. Um, going back to bomb space jumps, it's it, the better name for it is an instant unmorph jump, because when you are when you unmorph, you um, no, when you leave the Oh, I forget exactly what it is. Basically, when you leave the ground and unmorph, you're still grounded for 24 seconds. Something like that. And you can input a jump. So if you get an instant morph, um, you can go jump. Or no. There you go. Is like, really loves speedrunners and circuit breaking. So they helpfully help. They're very helpful. I mean, like almost every single category in the game. <laughs> yeah. It it uh, lets you get out of bounds. It basically with just getting to um, Aegon. Don't need any items. Just got to do some fancy movement, and then you're out. You. It's. They they really like to help us so much that they even even help us again later. <laughs> yep. That understandable spot. I didn't do that. I think I am though. Yeah. Magoo. Sorry. <laughs> um. The uh, thing with Robert also worked with Wogs. Funnily enough. Um, they also grab you and spit you out, and you can end up out of bounds. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, I've seen it like once on accident. Like someone was playing uh, casual randomizer, and they got sent out of bounds by a blog. That door open? I didn't even hear it. It probably did. I won't shoot a missile when I go there next time. Oh, come on. Right now, I'm just um, wall crawling around the um, Aegon Labs. It's basically like a, a circle that you're supposed to go around counterclockwise, um, and then use the dark beam to open a dark beam door to like leave out the other way. But I'm going to be going around the dark beam door side because it basically just skips to the end, and I get dark beam faster this way. I also mm -hmm. skip um, a pirate fight in the room that I just came from, and I'm also able to get this missile without traversing the north wall tunnels. Basically, it's faster. Yeah, it's not faster. Even, not even sequence breaking, just faster. It's just faster, yeah. There's, I can get all of these items without out of bounds, without any tricks at this point. It's just faster to do all this stuff. Um, so funny thing, I'm gonna force load um, this room uh, beside me by shooting this door and going near it, and then using this door to transition to the room. For some reason, if you press the R button uh, as you transition to this room, like that, um, the game will crash, like, every time. I have no idea why. It's just something that happens. Don't ever press the R button to turn while you're on top of that, uh, door. The reason is the power to crash. Goes. Right here, I'm gonna hit a, um, oh, am I too low? Am I too low? I think you're good. I um, I can't tell. No, I'm too low. Aww. That's fine, I'll just load the room. 
my dash wasn't strong enough for I think I might have just let go of R too early. Yeah, so now I've loaded this room, and now I'm going to load this room. Uh, some rooms in this game have different types of loads. Um, the, all the connecting rooms to the room that I was just looking at are proximity-based, so it's basically like how close you are to the door will determine when the rooms start loading. So I wanted this room that had the dark beam to load around me, um, so I just triggered the loading process and waited. Um, I was too low in the floor, so when the room finished loading, I fell underneath it instead of being inside of it. So I just got closer to um, another door to unload um, the dark beam room, because this game only really supports having two rooms loaded at once. Uh, like basically the room you came from in the current room, or the current room in the room you're going to. So I just essentially reloaded it to try again. Now I have the dark beam. Yeah. It's a very good beam for combat. It, it opens portals, as we see there. Um, yeah. And it does a lot of things. You can technically complete the game without picking up dark beam. Um, you can even pick up most items. Unfortunately, there's like the single stupidest trick in the um, in the game if you want to do that. You kind of can uh, like most of the items in the game. You can choose to That's skip fine. it and still get everything else in the game. It's incredible. So right here, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a safety save. It is actually still faster to. Um, to use this save station in game time because if I trigger the loading of the next room um, and skip the cutscene of the save station, um, the save station like cutscene will like allow the room to load during it without advancing the in-game timer. But I'm also just going to take the free safety save. Cause... Okay, so that rock Aaron destroyed. That saves one second, an hour and a half from now. Yeah. Video games come back to that later and I'll be happy that I remembered to blow up that silly rock. <laughs> Imagine if you could open a portal and throw the enemies there. It would be an incredibly <laughs> powerful combat ability. So Iron had to get close to that post to scan it because that's the way it's implemented. There's, there's um, two, some objects in this game have two scans depending on proximity. Um, if you're far too far away from that, it'll say local interference can't scan or something like that. Um, when you get close to it, it switches to the uh, version of the scan where you can do the thing. Also, light beam. It goes pew. I think that's all we need to know about it, really. If you can charge the beam, chip, shoot it. I didn't wait long enough. Yeah, this room reloads when you pick up the light beam item. So you just want to wait in the safe zone. If you hear the um, Any drops, please. Okay, thank you. If if you when you hear the portals activate, that's when you know the room has finished loading. I actually use my um, my disc spinning to know when the room is loading. I just <laughs> forgot to do that. If you if you play games um, on like physical hardware, you'll know that sometimes the Wii and GameCube disc drives are really, really, really loud. I didn't switch to light beam. I never forget to do it. Wait, I did. What? <laughs> <laughs> My mind is clouded. Uh, this is a GameCube game. Um, it does also have a version that was uh, released on the Wii. Um, with updated controls, but I am playing the GameCube disc on an Wii. So we're done in Aegon, basically. Uh, we're just going to go visit Robert again, have some tea, um, and then move on to the next area, Torvus. Um, yeah. You might ask about Dark Suit, and don't worry. Yeah, the dark suit will be collected. Um, it's just I don't. The dark suit doesn't actually really do anything except protect you from the dark aether. It doesn't hard block anything. So if you're good with your health management in dark aether, you can skip it even without any out of bounds at all. Um, it's just to get to the second area. I'm gonna be uh, going to a shortcut because all the all the areas in this game are interconnected. They all have a 
a portal like um portal an elevator like um connecting all the regions so because of that uh, i would rather use the elevator from Aegon to go straight to Torvus instead of going back to Temple Grounds. But in order to do that, I'll have to go out of balance. <clears throat> yeah. Um... That's not gonna blow up the door. Uh, Dark Sweet kinda requires, if you try to casually just keep it, there's a uh, path, a ruined path to Torvus that's gonna kill you. But it's if it's low jump, you could skip it. Yeah. I'm actually gonna consider saving again right now, just in case. It's free real estate after all. Yeah, this, this save will probably only waste about 10 seconds, so might as well take it. <laughs> I'm here to respect the time of the people who are allowing me to show this off, so. Why not take a nice save? I have to load this room anyway, so. Yeah, also, Dark Suit does have one very important effect, though. Um, there are certain ink claws in the game that spew out toxic gas, and they make a pretty bad hissing noise when you walk through there without Dark Suit. So when you pick up Dark Suit, that goes away, and that's why Dark Suit is the most important item in the game. Okay, Not Light Suit time. or Space Jump or Screw Attack, Dark Suit. This isn't gonna work. Oh, no, it is. Maybe. Okay. I I actually rely more on audio cues than I think I do for this trick, and I'm I'm not listening to my game directly through my capture card, so sometimes it's throwing me off. Nah. Because I'm I'm listening to it through my CRT and it's just a little quiet. So now that I'm out of bounds, I'm just gonna be going to the um the Taurus elevator, like I said. Oh come on. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so this route, uh, Miguel is in chat. Hi, Miguel. Miguel has many records and echoes. Um, Aaron is running the grapple delay route right now. Um, there is another more optimal route that's just a little bit silly, just a little bit. Um, fun fact when you're out of bounds, you can delay rooms from loading by opening and closing the map, and that's a load delay, and you can do some really goofy things with that. Um, but it's also a very hard route, so we're doing this. Ah oh, yes, this elevator that Aaron is taking is locked by a secret doors on both sides. But... So we get to go out of bounds eh. again. No worries, it's... it's oh no, simple. a secret door. Anyways. Oh, whoops. <sighs> I didn't jump far out enough before letting go of the stick. That's my bad. Uh, there's an uh, invisible collision there because echoes, so you got to jump around that. That's okay. I know the backups. Yeah. Okay. I, I do not things. like falling okay. down in this room because I have a hard time finding the aether box. Yeah, you have there. to kind of like jump around it and then fall underneath it and use your space jump to get around. Yeah. A little annoying. Oh, instant jump. Nice. Doesn't happen very often. So. Hello? We could just um, shoot the Whoa. door here, and that would activate a fight, and we can kill some pirates, and that'll warp us in bounds. But we got to do something else while we're out of bounds. Um, okay. This jump has been really bothering me since I've started playing the game again. So I just do it facing the other direction because sometimes I fail at like this. It's and for some reason, I awkward. I'm better at this when I face the other direction. Yeah, you have to like jump and like get a good height and get stuck in uh, this part of the wall here, so I can yeah. bump. Wait, that didn't work. Excuse me. Right, it looks like it worked, but for some reason, when you end more, you just fell. I don't know. It's very awkward. You can, if you don't land in a specific spot. Um, you just kind of get projected and fall yeah, down I there. Know. I don't know why that one attempt didn't work. Yeah, that was strange. So, wall growing in Taurus is kind of a mess. A lot of the rooms have huge aether boxes for no real reason. Like that tunnel, the aether box extends out so far to the sides. Like, I think it extends out past the, um, the next room that Aaron's going to be doing stuff in.
So the reason I'm doing this is because this room has a power on expansion. It's a... Uh... Oh, come on, really? It's uh, in this little, like, a tree tunnel uh, right here. I'm just going to be grabbing it like so. And then uh, going back towards the uh, the temple that I came from. Oh, come on. I need to stand up a spot. I remember when I um, was watching my friends run this game, uh, when I didn't really know anything about it, running it, um, this uh, section of the run always confused the heck out of me because I, I didn't know how they knew where they were going. Like, it just looks like a mess, like all these tree yeah, and stuff. I, mm -hmm. I like, have no idea what I'm looking at, but I mean, you come up with cues and figure yeah. it out. And a lot of the collision out of bounds isn't real, except for the collision that is real and is sometimes also invisible, like around Torvis Temple. Oh, long pirate, long pirate. No! Oh. Ooh. Oh, wow. I shot the dark shot too early in the so. Oh, this black screen takes forever on disc, oh my goodness. Yeah, it always gets me worried that the game's crashed. Loads. This game is pretty good about not crashing and Oh, I need a missile drop. Zones. Oh, thank god. Hello. <laughs> but just... you still worry. I wasn't paying attention to my missile count. I... Wait, no, I need the drop. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I need 15 missiles right now, and I had 14, because I wasn't paying attention to my counts. Yeah, and... After this, there's gonna be like three door super missile doors in the, in the sequence. Yeah. Oh, the drop yeah, system right. in yeah, this. Charge. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying that I forgot to charge my beam. Oh no. Yeah, the drop system in this game is pretty good. Sometimes, if you run a lot of Prime One, you probably have cursed out the the drop system, especially for power bombs. It just does whatever it wants. It never gives you what you need, and it's not uncommon in Randomizer to have zero out of eight power bombs and be in lower mines and need power bombs. But in this game, it actually scales the drops according to what you need. So if you have no power bombs, um, you're very likely to get a power bomb. If you're out of missiles, you're very likely to get a 10 drop. If you're low on HP, you'll get your HP drops probably. Sometimes you don't, then you die though, and it's really sad. Yeah, that's important to know. It's not guaranteed um, to get the, those like flex special drops. Um, so relying on them um, sometimes can bite you in the butt, but usually it's fine. Yeah, the, the, uh, the drop system is like very helpful and like so drop it. Yeah, what you need, but like eighty percent chance. So now we're going to go to Lower Torvus. If you know this game, um, you'll know that Moose Ball is here. Um, and you might think it would be faster to go get that first, but it routes out so much better to get Gravity Boost first. And it, really the Torvus, um, Dark Torvus key down here, that's more what you're getting now. So right here, I'm doing a trick called a underwater dash to um, reach these pillars. Uh, whoops. Uh, the timing of these ones is kind of hard because not only is the underwater dash um, a combination of pressing B and R on the same frame to lock my speed to the initial speed of like, like uh, to lock my speed before the water slows it down. I have to time my space jump so I land on those um, those pillars, which is kind of hard because you don't you can't just space jump. Um, like always after leaving the ground um it has like a limited timer something like three seconds it, something like that yeah it's not really important except for this exact room oh. <laughs> i got the frame perfect morph after scanning the thing before the cutscene started but i didn't hear it <laughs> i just keep smashing more uh yeah, nearly were the rds just to skip using seekers oh cool yeah. yeah, I'm just doing this to skip Seekers and also going out of bounds, because you can scan these from out of bounds as well. Uh, yeah. Seekers, of course, being very far away from here and not very good. 
but okay. Uh, there's a right. there's a long um like not cutscene but like a long like black screen section um where the game is. Oh, whoops! I forgot to scan the third post. Uh, <laughs> I'll uh I'll change the DNA noise and settings during this like black pause or whatnot. I forgot there was a third one I need to scan. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Just do some more underwater dashes to get to this post. Move, oh, more move faster. Yeah. I don't think I got... What? Oh, the fish tied to the thing moving. <laughs> oh. Yo! Rip. rip blog. Rip. I haven't seen that What am I going to read time. on the internet now, though, without the blog? So coming up is um, the best boss in the game, um, right up there with Boost Guardian. It's very scary and annoying. Once you pick up Gravity Boost, that is. The biggest blog. <laughs> okay, this cutscene takes a long time to skip, so I'm just gonna change over and fix the DNA real quick. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that should be fixed. So yeah, this is Alpha Blog. Um, very rude boss dashes at or charges at you, spits at you. It's just mean. Fortunately, it is a stupid animal, so it doesn't know how to lock the door, and you can just leave. And yeah, that's Alpha Blog. This is yep. probably the worst or second worst boss in the game, but fortunately, you can just not. Uh, it's wonderful because you do that and then you simply don't have to fight it and just all you need to do, do that is you didn't you didn't just cut. Yeah, the the interlacing thing was not a not a GDQ problem. It's just the when, the way these are set up, you have to use um, another build of um, of OBS and you have to reset everything up and I. I, of course, haven't set up my stream stuff in, you know, years, so I forgot <laughs> that I need to configure my Dean releasing settings. Fishes there are very wonderful, because they drop all the ammo that you need, a little bit more. Oh wow, I'm jealous. This looks a lot better than my, um, my setup. I'm, I'm jealous. It was actually probably not even 30 FPS on the stream, even though I was streaming at 60. I think, yeah, it was probably still 30, but now it should be 60. Yeah, it definitely looks it should, like it, jeez. It should look, it should look the same as, as, uh, as what it usually looks like on my recordings. So now we're going to go fight Boost Guardian. Um, the reason you get Gravity Boost first is the keys route out will be better this way. Um, the Dark Torvus key specifically. So we only have to dip into Dark Torvus twice this trip um, in Torvus before cleanup. Aaron, you should shoot those uh, phasing blasters. No, I'm not shooting those again. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna shoot them. The, the joke is health. that they do like 70 damage and Aaron would come very close to dying. Don't shoot phase on canisters unless you um, have a doctor's what? note. Oh God, I did the teleport respawn thing. That always confuses the heck out of me. Sometimes if you skip the cutscene of the, the tree breaking and also kill the pirates at the same time, uh, like, yeah. Did I have a sharpen filter? No, I just changed the deinterlacing to Yadif 2x. That's all I did. I wonder if... Should I add that to my OBS? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should. It's You just right-click the source and change the deinterlacing settings. That's all. Okay, thank you for not hitting me this time. I had a practice run yesterday where the, the uh, huntering in that room hit me even though I went through the room quickly. Like, I didn't even stop. They just hit me and I fell off the, the mushroom. Not actually not saving? Yes, I am saving. See? Yeah, this is a very convenient save station for marathons. Well, you use it anyway in the 100% run to get your health back. So. Right. But, but I'm just saying it's still convenient that it's here for 
just as like a marathon safety thing. Good luck oh my god, what? Oh wow, nice. <laughs> usually you never, never rolled that far. <laughs> yeah, usually you get to like the second to bottom step in the um bottom bit there, but that was like most of the way across. Yeah, it actually doesn't even save any time because this room here takes forever to load, which is actually why I think they put that puzzle there. Is because when you fall into the hole you have to bomb out and that um like accounts for the fact that the loading is longer or whatever. That should work. Right? Okay. That was kinda of sketchy. I tried to lay the bomb uh, closer to the center, because that's um, what makes this work, but uh, that was more sketchy than it had to be. Miguel getting timed out, that's... What is this, my actual stream? Anyway, that's, uh, that's Boost Guardian, and now I have my one of my favorite items in the game, Boost Wall. It's really fun to go fast. Mm -hmm. Oh good, the uh, puffers are gone. Light Beam did what it was supposed to do. Yeah, uh, I use um, I use Light Beam when I enter this room to kill those puffer enemies, because they love to get in the way of the, uh, of the, the like, half-pipe puzzle there to get that key. Oh yeah, so Boost Guardian sucks casually, even with Dark Suit. Um, it's not a good scene. So I just use a BSJ to get over this gate here. Um, this skips using the portal that I used to enter the Dark World to leave, and I can instead just continue along this way. Um, that trick is a lot of the reason why getting Boost Ball second is faster than uh, getting Gravity Boost. Yeah. This room is really scary because these, um, I think they're called uh, Dark Breeds, right? Dark Puffers? I don't remember. They're uh, those guys do, they do a lot of damage uh, with their poison and the atmosphere at the same time. They will kill you like almost immediately. Uh, so it's good to, you know, not die there. Dying is bad. Speaking of dying being bad, um, the chances of me dying to Chica are so unbelievably slim, but I'm gonna use this anyway, because I can. <laughs> that nice dash up there, Chica the key, skipping the grapple bean or so. So we can get the grapple later. Nice boost. One big reason this is called, that it is called late grapple is that we like getting grapple as much as possible because the game has a nice thing that after we get, uh, get the grapple beam, there's a random chance of some dark commando, I think they're commandos, spawning uh, in almost in a lot of rooms in the part of Tarvus that just waste time. Yeah, they're so bad. Um, but by not picking up grapple beam until like the last half hour. Ooh, that was scary. It's nice. So there's an ammo station right here, um, conveniently placed um, beside the boss, so I of course use it to get my ammo back. Now it's time for uh, Chica. Um, this boss is kind of infamous because the second part of it is vulnerable to um, a glitched item called Cannonball that you use in the 80% speedrun, but this 100% route doesn't have a good time to get Cannonball, so I'm going to be um, uh, actually fighting the adult portion of the fight, which is really, really, really difficult to perform um, and execute properly. Yeah. We don't even have Seekers um, for it, which is supposed to, and yeah, that I makes this fight it looks like I'm gonna be getting a four pool or five pool or a six pool maybe. Oh, five pool. Okay. I don't know why I call it a pool. It's just like yeah. Eyes. I'm getting six. Incredible. Okay. So Chica will breach. Chica larva will breach the water between two and six times. Um, that it's RNG. And there's a whole like multi-page document about what to do for however many breaches you get. Um, yeah, it changes how much damage I do. I have a little bit less damage done now than I would have if I um, had gotten two or three breaches, because if I do two or three breaches, I can fire off a super missile. Um, that, the, whether or not Chica d d jumps out of the water and let, lets you shoot a super missile at it is depending on how much health it has left um, during the two parts of the fight. So right now, its health is underneath that portion, so it will, be, it will continue um, swimming around like this. The health is um, too low to do a jump out of the water. I'm gonna get some more dark ammo here. 
Chica Larva also has the property where a, a weak spot shows up after finish scanning the boss. So you always want to scan the boss. Now it's time for the adult portion. That was a pretty decent uh, child fight. But now this is the actual hard part. Yeah, this is the bad part. This is why good, good. Chica Adult is my least favorite part. Around. Getting that initial snipe can be kind of annoying for me sometimes. I'm not very good at this. Okay, good. If you manage to get the the second shot like this, um, you can lock Chica in place and prevent it from turning around and having to go to a different platform. Good. I think it's going to turn out now. I also don't have the grapple beams, so getting between these platforms is kind of hard. Along with like you know dodging the poison water and trying not to take so much damage. But uh, right now. Um, my, my ammo and my, my resources are like really, really good. So as long as I perform the next part of the fight, I'm pretty well, I'll be fine. This fight is really, really, really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a lot of practice. Ah, oh, went the wrong way. Oh, come on. When the dark moon does that, okay. Now I'm actually not in a, in a great spot. So, um, one really? charge dark in the first um, first half of this fight was enough to stun Chica. Now it needs one charge and one um, uncharge. Come on, and just yeah, just firing lemons shots. is probably the best thing here. Oh no, it's gonna charge, isn't it? Okay. I have enough ammo as long as I don't miss any more shots. You, uh, for the second part of this fight, after the lightning phase from earlier, um, you can't just stun it with one dark charge shot, you have to use another uncharged shot as well. So because of that, you can't stun it to stay on one side, it has to turn. Also means you have to get another shot like that. And yeah, I did just hold up, um... Well, he has to try the amazing things, and wow, it's like night and day. I, I'm so mad I didn't know about this before. <laughs> All right, well, that's for the future. Yeah, uh, a common theme if you're a um, speedrunner of Metroid Prime games um, is to, like, want enemies to move, <laughs> like, get out of your way, but Chica Adult is the complete opposite of that. Chica is, is stop moving, please. Stay where you are so I can hit you. Like, stop being so annoying. Alright, that was like okay. The only bad part about that was the fact that I uh, missed the initial shot during the second Dark Moon phase and missed that like uncharged shot as well. But everything else was like okay. Did I not get health? Are you kidding me? Oh! Good, Good marathon. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I just have to uh, take a drop later on. I should be fine though. Yeah, sometimes uh, the Prime 1 drop system just um, comes back with a vengeance. Actually, yeah, to be fair, the, the drop scaling wasn't actually a mesh with Aaron's health. It, it oh, just okay. wanted you to... Um, I could just watch this cutscene. Yeah, I'm gonna watch this cutscene. Uh, this cutscene heals me when I watch it, so I'm just gonna... Because I'm in a safe zone, I'm just gonna sit in it. And also, a bit uh, we, we got the Torvus energy there, definitely, yes. You, you see, Samus is yeah, a fine. government contractor here, since the Lunoth are the government of Aether, and government contractors are known for cutting corners, and uh, this is a pretty big corner you can cut, so yeah. We're just not going to return the Torvus energy. I'm going to grab the health drop from the mushroom on the right. Keep me the track of like changes that I think that were fixed in later versions. Just keeping the Torvus energy like that was also fixed. Yeah, that was also fixed. All you have to do in this version is reload the room and uh, using the bomb slot, reload the room. You can also just go to the back of the room without using the bomb slot and that reloads Dark Torvus Temple. But IGT strats, baby. Yeah, the Taurus energy, um, like we talked about, doesn't actually do anything except like changing the the skybox of Taurus makes it like gold. It's so good. 
And uh, no, um, don't blink. I'm running out of bounds. There's just a big hole there. Yeah, it's um, an just artifact accepted. from the uh, dark version of the room with the piston. Uh, fun fact, there's also just an invisible spider track in that room for reasons. That out of bounds is completely unnecessary. It's just that that missile um, there is um, supposed to be like a one way path. Um, you're not supposed to be able to like uh, get stuck. Or, so you're not supposed to be able to like leave that area in the light world. You have to go back to the dark world. And it just happens to be faster to go out of bounds and uh, keep going that way. You know what I mean? It's faster. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to go back to um, Dark Forgotten Bridge and then walk back to where you actually want to go. So this is a lot faster. Oh my god, I remember to not morph here after getting the missile! Yo, yes. congrats! I didn't lose time. It's a really helpful shortcut, the out of bounds there. Which is... It's also surprisingly easy. Which is yeah. nice. Like, I have, a, I have a video detailing on... Um, doing that shortcut and going both ways, both exits of the room. I also have another video of how to get into where the missile is the other way, um, by going through the hole. Um, I always recommend that um, randomizer players learn that as like a first out of bounds trick, because it's simple and uh, it, like the utility is nice. It just saves you time, mm -hmm. so it's good. So now I'm making my second trip through Temple Grounds. Um, I'm gonna grab um, the Seeker Launcher, which is an item we talked about earlier. It lets you shoot five missiles at various targets. And not hit them usually, but I digress. I'm also gonna grab a couple, I'm gonna grab a couple items in Temple Grounds along the path to enter a Sanctuary Fortress from the front. Also one um, of the light I have blocks. power bars. And we'll like yeah, to walk I, for hours later. <laughs> yeah. I, I do have power bombs, um, which are the items that are required to access the sanctuary elevators, um, like the from Aegon and Torvis. But I'm not going to use them because uh, one of the like most um, annoying rooms to route in Echo Center Percent is sanctuary entrance. Um, there's an item there, but in order to get it, you have to nice hole in one. Nice. You have to um, enter sanctuary from Temple Grounds without like extensive wall crawling. Uh, just that is not faster. Yeah. So the reason I enter Sanctuary from the front is to open up that path so I can get the item later. It's a great elevator in random elevators for Echo's Rando, I must say. Certain ele if you go to certain elevators, um, it's a soft lock unless you can go through the elevator you're going to, and uh, then you see Sank Entrance and you cry and reset. Did that work? I didn't hear it. Okay, it worked. Okay, it did work. This room here has a puzzle. If you want to remember, it's always one one three two. Yep. Oops. <laughs> you know, mar marathon runs of Prime hit different because all of your accidental pauses actually do matter. <laughs> they they really hit different. Take your missiles. Yeah, they Time certainly the miss. Uh... Yeah, they didn't miss there. Luckily, eight one nice. miss. There are flicker pads in that room specifically for when you miss Seekers because Seekers. One of the uh, the most like common uh, movement tech things I do um, to save some time are called instant morphs and unmorphs. Um, we talked about instant unmorphs earlier as like the prerequisite for doing midair jumps um, via BSJs, but you can also do an instant morph by obstructing the camera. Uh, one of the like like most common ways I do it is like by jumping um, as I'm walking through a door and I bonk my head and that obstructs the camera and lets me morph immediately. Uh, you'll see me do that sometimes. Sometimes I like jump at a corner and try to morph when I'm like around the corner and that also gives me instant morph if I do it correctly. Just looks cooler. It does save some time. Look, so that this. missile trooper doesn't spawn until you fight Bomb Guardian. Yeah, uh, I don't have to go out of bounds here, um, but I'm gonna go do it anyway because I did get the missile from earlier, and uh, the rec uh, one of the things that makes getting that missile at the beginning of the run uh, faster is because I can just go out of bounds and uh, walk around the labs. This is actually the item, the wall crawl you could do to skip uh, item loss in any percent, just straight up. Yeah, if you're curious about any percent, it's literally the same wall crawl. I don't do anything different here. Yeah. I even lost skip, but late.
that, that sounds like a good, a good name we will do for this trick. I think loss after I think loss. <laughs> Brad, I'm playing on disc. That room takes a little bit longer to load. I-L-S-A-L-S or I-L. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> this community loves its bad names. What can we say? Okay, don't morph after shooting this door. Uh, switch to light beam and shoot the block. So uh, I almost always forget that. This game with light. Oh, go ahead. Tracks, uh, tracks item percentages, uh, not by looking to your inventory, but also by actually counting how many items you've collected, pick up to collected, collected. So you start at zero percent, so you have to pick up things to go up. So since there is one item that's just not there when you lose the items, if you skip it, that's you're gonna finish at ninety nine percent. Oh wow, I sensed another morph. I almost never get that. I think I got a power bomb. I didn't hear it though. Okay, I did. And losing your items actually causes that uh, that item count to go back to zero. So if you pick up stings and then lose your items, then that's just your percentage counter goes bad. It's also why there's three different low percentage categories in this game, which is lovely. Which all depends on how how much your abuse of the item loss cutscene you do. So at the beginning of the run, if you were here, I talked about how I watched the cutscene of this ship. Um, it, that's what makes this translator gate spawn. If you if you don't watch the cutscene and you like jump around it. Um, uh, after grabbing the missile launcher, you don't have to scan the gate, but I, I don't really prefer... I don't like um, not hitting that kind of trigger. I don't know, it's just personal preference. I hit the trigger, put the room on the correct layer for their current missile launcher item. So, fun fact, um, that transfer gate, later gate, while it looks like an emerald gate, it's actually a violet gate. Because that goes... There's an amber gate, um going to Great Temple from Torvis. That's also that looks like an Amber Gate, but it's also a Violet Translator, actually. So this is Sanctuary Fortress, um, the third area of the game. Um, uh, there's a lot of really important upgrades here. Um, it's also probably the hardest area in the game. I'm going to be here for a while. Um, every side area has two trips. The first trip where I like collect the upgrades, um, and then the second trip where I clean up the rest of it later once I have the light suit. Um, but for Sanctuary, I'm actually going to be picking up quite a lot of the stuff in my initial pass through, so I'm going to be here. Come on, I'm going to be here for quite a while. No, I missed. No, don't throw grenades at me. Excuse me. <laughs> Die. Thank you. Uh... Jeez. One of the so not only do they lock the doors, um, unlike the alpha blog, they are intelligent enough to lock doors. Um, you, they, you also have to kill them uh, to open up the item, activate the item in that room, and be able to collect it. That room takes forever. Hi, Quentin. It's a quad here that you expect you to just defeat. She will unlock the gate, but... Goodbye, yeah. Quentin. Actually, doing that, uh, you lock the save station forever. Does this actually lock the save station forever? Yeah, um, it, but so you walk towards the it and the uh, red barrier reactivates. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't it's know that. It's something you have to consider for rando, if you ever want to save warp from there. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. That's funny. Nice, I didn't get the instant unmorph when it actually matters. All right, let's go for this cool trick that saves four seconds and is super hard. Dang, all right, let's try one more time. All right, got it, that still saves time. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's very fiddly and obnoxious. Oh, and Aaron didn't get flipped around to face the, uh, the quads. 
Uh, if you do that, you don't actually get turned around because the quads don't activate. They don't like they don't oh. aggro on you. Right? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what. That's what happens. I I tested this stuff like like a long time ago, like half a year ago, and I just don't remember because it's been a while since I played the game. Okay, and you have key. You're not collecting that. Yeah, I'm not collecting the, the key. I actually can't even collect it right now, anyway. But even when we can, we don't. Uh, they do not count. And all red temple keys do not count towards completion. Actually, any keys for that matter. Um, yeah, none of the keys count. But we have to pick up the other 15 to use them. Um, hive keys are a joke. There are so many ways to get around the hive keys, it's not even funny. And th that's before we even add in like rando shuffling annihilator to somewhere accessible. Yo, you can skip the hive keys on the Wii version now too, so they are they are 100% a joke. <laughs> yeah, it, that that trick is stupid though, isn't it? Yeah, on the Wii. Hmm? Oh no, it's fine. It's pretty easy. Oh, okay. Maybe it just sounds stupid. It's not that dumb. Conceptually, I mean. The drone that over there, building a slope jump, which will jump over the wall. Yeah, you you're just supposed to roll under. under the room and see the mechlops. Uh, the only reason you ever see mechlops under any circumstances um, are because someone needs a power bomb to get to Arian Rando. Literally, the only reason I've ever seen anyone um, go to the mechlops. This puzzle here, uh, you must use for the power ring to sh uh, shoot. Well, you can also use missiles or charge an elevator, or the best one, screw attack. <laughs> no, we didn't get the, the animation glitch. Once again, um, you know, respecting the time of the people organizing the event by making safety saves. I'll be uh, using that safe station again, actually, uh, later in about like 10 minutes or so. Um, before a... where am I going? Before a difficult uh, section that uh, is not really likely for me to die in, but like, I don't know. You know, you never know. Sometimes Echo just says die and you need to not lose the run. So here I'm going to be using the um, the instant amorphs and um, boosting to preserve my speed to jump across this big gap. Um, that stuff is really, really, really broken and really, really, really good. Um, this game used to be a lot harder before you could do stuff like that, and it's just kind of trivialized a lot of stuff. Yeah, um, you might know about um, Grand Abyss, um, the one-shot yeah, trick there. Uh, now there's no less oh, than no. two different ways to get across that room that are repeatable. No. But yeah, boost boost um, is a very good trick and has made this game a lot easier. I let uh, I let go of my dash a little too uh, too early and I lost some speed and didn't make the cycle. Now here's Grand Abyss, that really really hard room that if you failed, um, you uh, you know had to reload your game because you couldn't get across the gap. And hundred percent, it wouldn't it didn't matter because you had grapple beam. So getting Grand Abyss only actually saved you about 20 seconds, but now, uh, because that's not going to work, uh, because Grand Abyss um, is like no longer an issue, uh, we delayed the grapple beam uh, until later in the run. Can I get Vault Dash, please? Oh, all right. But when we, say, we talk about like this community, naming things hmm, bad. <laughs> we, can, we can thank Diggle here for saying the boost boost, but boost, I, I, I kind of prefer bad. boost Please. jump. I, boost I will freely jump. admit, boost jump is a much better name, but I like my stupid names. Oh, nice dash. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Don't fall off. No! Resbit, no! <laughs> Do Resbit's thing. doing the only thing they know how to do, being horrible. Oh my god, it even ruined my attempt at the bunny hop! Come on. <laughs> Get in the hole, Saris. I do like the uh, Resbit for like the concept of the enemy, yes. but they're, they're really terrible for... <laughs> oh yeah, Resbits are awesome in like lore and like all that stuff, but they are so annoying. Mm-hmm. 
They're the best thing you can do is um, when they hack you and you're supposed to press a button combination to um, reboot your system, um, the best thing you can do is just re reboot your game entirely by mistake because you're done. Did you do that? I did that once in a random run. <laughs> it was... It's funny. I'm gonna try something funny right. here. All right, I got it. Ah, oh, nice. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> All right, curl up into a fetal position. This is how you screw attack. Yes. Yeah, if you um, screw attack out of an instant uh, on Morph, uh, you can uh, do some funny stuff like that. That one actually saves a little bit of time, I think, but it's like not worth going for. <laughs> but I want to, to do it because, you know, it's funny. It's, well, it's amazing. I'm trying to have some fun. <laughs> That's what we're here to do. Have fun. Yeah, here uh, there is like jumping some collision. Uh, just to skip the puzzle. It's. Yeah. I would I sometimes say that they may oh, even be. Oh, nice. Simpler. Nice. You were complaining about this a lot last night. This. Yeah, I was. <laughs> That's the secret to getting things. Complain that... enough, and it'll eventually stop wanting to hear you complain. So it just lets you have the trick. That movement right there is so stupid. The like instant morph off the door and then. Um, wait, what am I doing? Oh my god, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> I'm, I'm not getting the Echo Visor right now. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, going up this way to get the Cobalt Translator. Whoops. It's the same movement, I swear. It's the exact same movement as later in the run, I swear. That's why I forgot. Also, you need um, you're supposed to use a power bomb for that, but you can also not. As usually in this game, you can use screw attack instead of other thi other things. Yeah, the, no. pre the prevailing theory is that screw attack was added late into development, and a lot of things were rendered um, vulnerable to it by default. Um, it shouldn't matter because you're there's no way to get screw attack early. You're playing casually, the intended way. Oh, whoops. That's gonna work still, right? Yeah, okay. Goodbye, quad. Um, that quad, if you destroy the, um, the head first before you destroy the legs, then another head will just spawn, so that's why you destroy the legs first on purpose. But you, like, shoot the head. The head has, like, a shield, um, after the legs go away, so it's best to just shoot the head until it's one shot away from, um, being destroyed, right? And then you break the legs so that the head will die quick, more quickly after. I'm gonna watch this cutscene because it saves a tiny bit of in-game time because the room is loading during the cutscene. Sorry, folks. And then here, um, I guess I won't skip this cutscene either because some people will probably get mad at me if I did. <laughs> Hear the words of Olir, last son, central of the fortress temple. May they serve you well. Yes, hear the words of Olir. Now imagine watching this cutscene like. How long is this cutscene? Times. I think it's long. I think we can skip it all. I can skip it now? Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> we heard Just the, the words of Olir. That's all we needed to hear. Really. Yeah, all we needed to hear words. <laughs> how, much, how much sanctuary lore am I going to learn here? I, I gotta keep going. Uh, yeah, you can boost up walls in this game. Um, if you if you release your boost, like the frame that you touch collision, I sometimes go for it just because it's fun. But for the most part, it's not really worth it. That trick is called a wall boost. It actually, um, for people who enjoy randomizers, um, that trick has its own category uh, in logic with different difficulty levels and stuff. It's a very fun trick, especially when you don't have bombs. I have a power bomb, right? Yeah, I do. Just don't use on the boss. <laughs> I don't use power bombs on Spider Guardian. Unless you're playing randomizer. But here, oh, yeah. I wasn't looking at. I wasn't looking. I was reading the chat. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> didn't boost into the thing because I was reading the chat. But yeah, uh, Spider Guardian is actually very, very vulnerable to power bombs. It's actually too vulnerable. And it just dies. Uh, and forgets to uh, lock the door. I am terrible at this fight, optimally, by the way. It's not like dangerous. I'm not, I'm not in any danger of like dying. It's so excellent. Yeah, that's a hard fight to execute well. Uh oh. That wasn't enough, really. Yeah, you. Oh, you no, that was it. enough. I'm done. Yeah, that was fine. Whatever. It could have been worse. It's 
Gotta stun the uh, boss. Yeah, and... it's, it's four bombs to stun the boss and then bomb the slots. Yeah. Gotta direct it into the pylons. Oh, I missed it. What? I didn't mean to roll over that gap, whatever. There's a little cheese strat you can do here instead of bombing while falling. Um, Which is the Make sure you write strat. this down. Yeah, write that write that strat down. It's not that hard. It's really good. I'm not gonna make it in time, am I? Okay, I did. Nice. If you if you're like in the air during your boosts, uh, when those cutscenes start, you'll just fall back down immediately and you lose all your speed and stuff like that. The fun strat you can do here. Um, if you uh, stun Spider Guardian under this platform Aaron's at, um, Spider Guardian is supposed to roll, will roll and um, reset the platform there. But if you time it just right, Spider Guardian will roll through it as it's, um, if you time the bomb display, the Spider Guardian will roll through it as it's lowering. And you can essentially trick the game into skipping a pylon. It's slower than just doing it like this, but it is really funny. This is actually not that bad of a fight. Um, it looks, it looks I do good. much worse. Usually I do much, much worse than this. That was enough, right? Okay. I don't have the sound on loud enough. I think none of us have sound. Yeah, it's picking up uh, bombs. Actually, uh, you can skip bombs for this, in this game and doing max percent. You still collect 97 percent of the items. One of the items you can collect is a spider ball because this room here, this boss here, you just can't do it. There is a way of like uh, doing bomb slots with all bombs. It is very interesting because the bomb slots themselves are still vulnerable to Dark Burst, Sun Burst, Sonic Boom, and Sonic Screw Attack. Not um, that there's a setup to make Screw Attack work. Sadly not. But you can shoot Dark Burst or Sonic Boom into the slot and then morph and connect to the slot. And there's Beast 2 alive, so you can still get the slot. You can even pick up, there's a missile that only spawns after fighting Bomb Guardian. You can still pick that up because you don't, you don't have to pick up bombs to make it spawn. It's strange. Also, yeah, Sky Temple Key. So you want to have Light Beam equipped here so you can roll shot this portal, but I, Light Beam doesn't make it through the tunnel to hit the door, so I use a missile to shoot the door instead. I love um, small tricks like that. Here's, a, here's another small trick. While I'm waiting for the room behind this door to load, I'm gonna just like scan it to like line myself up with the door so that I want to roll through the tunnel, I'll roll through the very middle of it, and like not bonk on any collision. Which is nice. Yeah. So now that I have the uh, the spider ball, I'm gonna be um, skipping the echo visor for a bunch of things, and before I grab it, just because it's faster. Uh, one of those things is um, reaching Quadraxis. Um, before I do that, though, I'm going to go back to the safety save spot, just in case. Um, there is a, an equivalent save station in the Dark World, but I don't really want to risk going to the save station. I haven't really practiced it. And I will actually have more health um, if I save in the Light World than if I go to the Dark World and save before the boss, so I might as well just do it this way. Like I said, my, my odds of dying to Quadraxis are sort of very low, but I mean, like, there's an out of bounds section before it, too, and all that, so might as yeah. well just be on the safe side. Sometimes the game can just declare that you die because no drops, but you have to have, like, horrendous luck, like, bottom 10th percentile or something. Yeah, it's, you have to have really, really, really awful luck, probably even worse than that, to, like, actually die with no chance of uh, being able to execute around it. Yeah. I don't actually think I've seen anyone die to luck. I might have seen maybe the F die but like once. I'm not sure. When I was bad, I died a lot to Quadraxis. Then, yeah, I then, I... then I figured out how. Then I figured out how to oh. do get uh, drops off the leg, so it's fine. 
Almost made the same mistake as last night. I almost shot lightning at that portal. Oh no. That's a that's a dark portal. It uses dark beam. Or use dark beam to activate it, not light beam. Alright, so now is the section where I'm gonna go out of bounds to skip this um, echo visor lock that's in front of me right now. There's just a hole in the ceiling here, so you can be SJ to it. I'm gonna be staying out of bounds here. Um, you can go back in bounds here um, uh, and just enter the fight normally, like from um, inbounds. But I'm gonna do it this way, uh, just because um, it's better for my health and also I. I'm just, just safer, I don't have to worry about the process of going back in bounds. Um, one side effect of this is that um, the music for the boss will start, but then um, after a while it will go away. So I'm By sorry, a while, people like the music. Three seconds like, or so. It'll, like immediately it's gonna go away, so yeah. I'm sorry. One of the best themes in the series, and nope. So for this boss, um, you kind of want to get close to the, um, the like pieces that you destroy. Um, you, you want to trigger it to do this stomping attack and then just jump over the shock waves as you wait for the next um, kneecap to be vulnerable. Like so. And then just notice when it's attacking you and jump. Can I get out? Leave me alone. <laughs> she says as she's viciously assaulting the boss, but yes. Uh, you can bomb the little feet, the legs, um, to try to get some more drops, but usually you don't have to worry about that. Um, the blue drops are 50 for those who aren't aware, and um, yellow drops are um, 99 energy. Or 100? 100? 100? Yeah, 100. 100. 100. They just heal you to 99 when you don't have an energy tank. So that's your maximum capacity. Oh god, that's bad. Go on, turn on, turn on, turn on! Okay, turn on. <laughs> the, the leg broke my shot, and I almost um, got shot by the boss and like stunned. That was kind of my fault. I should have been more careful with how I was orientated. Okay, so phase two. Um, I don't have the echo visor to lock onto the antenna, but I could just like shoot it and also screw attack it to damage it. And then um, I also don't have the echo visor to lock onto these antennas, but I can still just get close and shoot them. Uh, I can suck up drops um, while waiting for this the antenna to come back up again, so it's like doesn't waste any time. Oh, uh, nice, I can't see Mr. Attack by accident. Yeah, the fight's pretty much over at this point. I would have to screw up, like, pretty badly to die. Especially because I'm gonna grab that health drop. No, just be on the safe side. I'm surprised all those hits. Okay, no phase three. I want to um, stand on uh, one of the legs before I boost up it and just wait for it to come close to me. Hopefully, it doesn't try to shoot me. Ah, rip. Oh, come on. <laughs> it canceled my shot. All right, which way are you going to go? Uh, you're going the other way. Come on. Yeah, whatever. I'll have to wait over here then. Now, uh, usually, you want to lure it to one of the the legs that you boost off of and just like hit it immediately because if you if it doesn't start coming towards the leg that you're waiting on you can just go to the other one you have enough time but i i didn't get that to happen so unfortunately i'll just have to do it this way all right you're gonna come this way or not yeah yeah this fight is interesting because like it's a very unique fight phases and everything and you'll have also Quite a few different options of items you can use. For example, it was easily skipping the echo visor, but you can also skip the boost ball and spider ball. Ah, I don't need to grab it. Simply the spider ball is a bit tricky to leave after. If it is like a one shot trick, um, at the soft block if you fail, unless something else has been found. There. There's another um, wall boost into a, a farm slot for whoever pointed that out last time. Well, you do actually have to turn the Sanctuary energy, though. That's um, what the uh, 
Light suit is locked behind returning the sanctuary energy, so yeah. One awesome thing about this game, probably the best thing about this game, is that when you grab the energy, um, you get fully healed. Uh, in the any percent speedrun, you actually wall crawl around Quadraxis and completely skip the Annihilator Beam and all that stuff. Um, if you didn't get fully healed, though, um, on the way, like, before you start leaving the layout, um, this probably wouldn't be worth it. So you'd have to, like, fight Quadraxis with, like, two or three energy tanks, and, like, that's bad. It's possible, but it's dumb. And also 50, 50 ammo, like, that, that would suck a lot. Yeah. I mean, quad skip also sucks, but, you know. Significantly um, less so. But yeah. Right here, while this room's loading, I'm just gonna screw attack, if I can screw attack. Screw attack, um, you don't take as much damage during it. So I'm just gonna... Yeah, it's like... ...kill some time while I wait for this massive room to load. Yeah, you take, like, between the third and the fifth less damage. It's I think Dark Suit is 1.2 and damage per second, and okay, so Barrier Suit is five damage per second, six, right? Six. Oh, six. Yeah, sorry, it's, it's six. And then what I was thinking was, um, it's what Dark Suit is one fifth of that, 1.2 damage per second. I think um, Screw Attacking is 1.6 with Barrier Suit and 1.2 with Dark Suit, right? I can't, I can't remember. It's something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna destroy these guys with Annihilator Beam now because nice. I hate them. Annihilator is a great weapon. Yeah, it has the same, um, um, like, like, um, shot rate, I guess, like shot speed. I don't know what the term for that is, um, as Power Beam. Uh, but Power Beam does 2 damage per shot, and Annihilator Beam does 12, so, like, math is pretty strong. And it holds. Yeah, and it holds. Which is usually a good thing. Yeah, the one um, not amazing thing about it is that it doesn't have the um, the damage bonus that Dark and Light Beam have versus various uh, creatures. It's like the only thing about it. All right, well, now it it's time to do the movement that I did earlier. Has. Yeah, it does do that for some reason. Remember earlier when I went the wrong way? Now I'll do that movement. I'll be going the right way. Funny how that works. Gasp. I particularly like how after we do all this wall crawling and everything and quad fight without Echo oh, Visor, no. <laughs> we're gonna get the, the Echo Visor. That was a hot dog mistake, I'm sorry. That feel in hot dog. Fun fact, if you jump while standing on these elevators, they'll go back down. So don't don't jump while don't jump while waiting on the elevators in this game. Don't be impatient. Or do and suffer, like I do. Speaking of being patient, I'm gonna make sure I'm actually on this thing now before I attempt to roll off the platform. Yeah, it's surprisingly that was, that was finicky that, uh... <laughs> that was... <laughs> far bump. I got stuck on something. I don't know why I'm attempting to grab ammunition here. I don't need it. I have so much. It's pretty real. It's now it's time for, for a Dark Samus to too. Yeah, this is Kirby Master's rando waifu. Um, don't ball, don't ball, don't ball. Please don't ball. Don't do it, don't do it. Yeah. No! Oh, this is like the it's worst. Okay, I got it. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, if she gets that attack off, um, it wastes like at least 15 seconds, probably more. It's a very rough attack. Um, Dark Beam is very effective on Dark Samus. Um, oh, come on. No, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't. Oh. Sometimes she does these attacks when she's invincible. I unfortunately um, went over the damage threshold for her returning to um, uh, the, like, phase where she's invisible in the light world. So unfortunately I um, had to deal with her um, being in a position where she could use one of those attacks that makes her invulnerable. But all in all, that was an okay fight. Oh, but the rumble here is insane. <laughs> Anni annihilator is, uh, can open both portals, but charging a later can open it neither. <laughs> because it's echoes. Video games. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be fun. Alright, let's see if I can get the cool boost. Oh, that was really close. You can oh. boost on top of this. Oh my god. <laughs> you can also boost off of it, apparently. 
I'm gonna have to go around. <laughs> I'll die. <laughs> I'm not gonna die. There's health drops and stuff, man. Uh, you can, when you were originally boosting off that first spider track, you can, like, land on top of the other one instead of having the bomb on top of it, but I've only ever done that twice, and the only other person I know who's done it is DF, and he doesn't have a recording of it. I have it, like, in one of my 100% runs. It's, like, the second time I did it or something, and I was like, oh my god, I got another video. It's funny. And, of course, it saves, like, one second. Yeah, one second. The amount of time it takes one bomb to explode, it's naturally. Yeah, that's Echo Visor. It's, um, an item in this game. Yeah, it's required to pick up a few items, um, without, like, you know, extensive out of bounds and stuff. Yeah. And I also have to pick it up because it's 100%. Uh, it's the game's namesake. Yeah, yeah it the is. game's that's namesake. The game doesn't, really, doesn't really do anything. I don't need to worry about my health here. I'm going to get a refill soon. Thank. Hey, right? You get refilled when you return the energy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think so. That sounds like you think that would happen. I don't think so, actually. What? Did I miss? Excuse me? What? Sometimes this just happens. Video game. Usually you miss when there's enemies around you. Not when there's nothing. Yeah, you basically have to lock onto those things to hit them, and I, that's what I tried to do, and it didn't work. Actually, I don't get healed here. Um, I just remembered I'm gonna want to grab some health drops, so I'll just be careful in one of the next rooms. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to boost off the ledge. Is there not a knee tank soon? Uh... There is, but it's um, not for a few more rooms. Uh, I'm talking about Sentinel's Path. The enemies there can be kind of dangerous. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm just gonna kill them. The if you try to ignore them, they they can do like a lot of damage to you. And these guys can also do a bunch of damage. I expect to get hit here. No. Okay. I think a Resbit shot does 30 damage or 20. 20. 25. 20 points. I really needed like a, a BSH to skip the puzzle when transfer sex is there. You could just, just jump on the hole instead of doing all the puzzle. Yeah. Slurp into the tunnel, or the funnel. Yeah, it's basically a slurp. Now the slurp is that thing you do with um, the Aegon portal to Torvus and just sort of Slurp up the half pipe. That's the slurp. You you can just walk up that half pipe if you do something really weird. I don't know how it works. It just does, much like Fallout 76 at launch. Sorry, I'll always take pod shots at Fallout 76. All right, well, these are the enemies I'm going to be killing because they're annoying. Yeah, they're loud. They, um... They are very loud. These guys suck. And Annihilator has a property where it homes in on enemies. Um, and it just loves to home in on those guys. Whoever um, said that I was too early on the Echo Lock shot, thank you, because I actually took that into consideration here. Just another thing that I uh, kind of rely on audio cues for. You did get the uh, oh, ammo oops. thing in Watt Station, right? Yeah, I did. Okay, okay. I looked away at that exact moment. I am currently not missing an item. Excellent. Oh my god, I'm gonna grab some drops. <laughs> I think yes. there's a knee tank in main research, right? No, that's a missile expansion. Oh, right. Reactor no, core has the knee oh, tank. Right, right, right. I have done hundo runs, I promise. My brain is just so poisoned by rando, I don't know where most things are. Well, we know where things are. What, what they are. Well, yeah, I know where they are, but not what they're supposed to be.
Does the crew attack me? Does everything the item? Let me see if the puzzle here in me oh, resource. This is right yeah. underneath the quad. <laughs> yes. Nice, not even damage. We'll jump here, just keep all this long puzzle with like three part of transitions. Yeah, it's a horrible puzzle. A puzzle of using power bombs and beams to open doors very slowly. Um, so we're, we're just about done with our first trip in Sanctuary. Um, the only thing that's preventing, or that really prevented one trip Sanctuary for a long time was the item in Sanctuary map station, where you need, well, air quotes, need light suit. Now there's a load delay strat to get the item, and um, the world record route Miguel does actually does do one one trip Sanctuary and never has to come back. Yeah, this is a thing that most people when playing this game casually actually don't do, which is using the beams more obviously. They're really good. Yeah, they're really they are broken. Mm. Actually, but they're not shooting for really. <laughs> the doors in this, now. The doors in this game are very ungenerous with their hitboxes on like prime one doors. Did I shoot it? Yeah, I shot it. I say we're good as if uh, me having that door shot matters for more than just saving like one second. The most important second of the run though, arguably. Alright, uh, there's kind of a dumb trick here to skip um, by climbing this room to get the um, power on expansion here. You have to time um, your jumps and your screw attacks um, really well to be able to get up here. Yeah. It's kind of a difficult trick. One of the things you see people do a lot is um, right, screw attack cancel. Or you just press B again before um, before you can actually do the next screw attack. And so you don't bonk and can kind of let you wiggle your way oh, out of corners. Like that. I believe uh, the Dark Beam should light either uh, the enemies does 20 damages per shot, which is the same damage as the uh, missile. Yeah, yeah, Dark Beam is 15 base and double damage on light enemies, so it's... um. 30. It's basically okay, a missile on, And it on can also enemies. freeze enemies, like dark commandos, even dark enemies, you can freeze and then missile them. It's, uh, strong. The, uh, ammo system in this game is actually pretty generous once you realize how it works. Um, and that you always at least get petty drops when you run out. And you can just charge to fire, um, a normal shot if you run out of ammo completely. But yeah. Oh, nice. Sorry, I twisted right into your body. I'm sorry. <laughs> but vehicular manslaughter is the best weapon in Echoes. Okay, so uh, right here, I'm gonna be um, taking a safety save in the next room, only because um, the last save. Why didn't I screw attack? My last save was before Quadraxis, so I might as well just make another one. And we're on pace for missiles, so that's good. Fun fact about the beams in this game, they actually are internally the same as the Prime 1 beams. Like, Dark Beam is Ice Beam, Light is Plasma Beam, and Annihilator is Wave Beam. If you were around at the beginning of the run when I mentioned the differences between the American version and the PAL release, um, that was the rock I was talking about. On the um, PAL version of the game, you have to bomb it to blow it up, but in this version of the game, you can do a bunch of stuff like you can screw attack into it, you can boost it, you can super missile it, a bunch of other other nonsense that the randomizer actually takes into account. The super the missile is especially funny. There's a lot of yeah, things that funny. are vulnerable to boost bombs and power bombs um, necessarily, and screw attack, but that one is boost unique bombs. in that it's also vulnerable to supers. Yeah, I think there's nothing else that's just randomly vulnerable to supers. My uh, missile count right now is correct. You're supposed to have 105 missiles getting light beam. Or light suit, sorry. A light beam, huh? I you mean, there are light beams light in this room beam. that you use, so you do get the oh, ability that's... to use light beams as travel. So yeah, that, that tracks. Light beam here is gonna be, will be a very fun seed. <laughs> uh, super missiles do 180 damage, I'm pretty sure. 
So um, five missiles is 150. Um, so super being um, 180 means you get um, basically an extra missile's worth of damage output for the cost of a charge shot, right? They're pretty good, very strong. Um, they just don't have any of the elemental damage buffs in this game. But they'll kill most things when you need them to. Fun fact, um, this is a force load. Um, this is the only force load in the entire game that you can do, um, nice, uh, bomb. It's the only force load you can do in bounds. And by force load, I mean, um, there's no proximity load trigger to load that room, and there's no load, and there's no, um, regular load trigger either, like an area one that you have to walk into to load the room. Uh, that's just because they just didn't put a load trigger there for that room when you specifically come from the light warp. So, congratulations, you're technically, um, not like doing a glitch, but, like, I don't know. We're doing a unintentional method of like forcing lo rooms to load, I suppose. If you open that door, let me open here. So um, I mentioned earlier that um, every area um, other than Temple Grounds has um, two trips. This is the second trip for Torvis. I'm just going to be picking up the two Sky Temple keys here, along with all the other items, and then heading to Sanctuary. Oh, stuff. Okay. Oh god. Well, I did bomb the door, good. I didn't hear it. I just assumed that it worked. <laughs> One thing I do here, um, instead of walking around the room, I go through the middle because I hit the load trigger for the next room sooner. Uh, this room takes a little bit to load. Um, so, as you can see, it wasn't even like loaded by the time I arrived and I'm playing on disc, so... If I went around, um, I would have reached the door probably a little faster, but the room uh, would have started loading later. So, um, it would have been slower overall. There's a few places in Metroid Prime, uh, 1, 2, and maybe 3. I. Probably three as well, because there are some rooms that take forever to load, but... Uh, there are some optimizations like that, where you take, like, a, a seemingly suboptimal path to reach something, but uh, you end up saving time because of loads. Yeah. So coming up it's is, just something that you learn over time. Coming up is a very good room. Um, everyone loves this one. Torvus Plaza. Plaza. Wonderful room. Uh, yeah, th th these pirates have a 75% chance to spawn. 70? 70, my bad. Is it 70? Oh, yes. okay, I thought it was 75. Thanks. Yeah, um, That's gonna work, right? Okay. Yeah. Th this room is bad, the intended way. There's, it's long, um, you can get knocked down, the camera bugs out in uh, certain places. It's bad. The trick in this room is actually easier, I think, than doing it the intended way. One of the select few rooms where that's the case. The, and the trick is not even that easy. It's just, it's just that the room is very, very bad. Yeah. The room is long and bad and annoying. I don't like it. But Retro loves their spider ball puzzles. They love them. They put them everywhere. Yep. They love spider ball puzzles. I could have gotten that missile um, before, the energy tank that I just picked up, but it's because the missile, like the tunnel to the missile is closer to the exit out this way, it's faster to get it on the way out by like, especially to get it out like after the energy tank um, by like one second. Just save some movement. So this is uh, Dark Forgotten Bridge. This is like the place I did the dash um, before Chica after I got the boost ball. Now I'm going to be going this way because there's an item in this room called Future Alcove, and there's two other items. Uh, one of them being an item you have to pick up in order to beat the game, um, a Sky Temple Key. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't get that easily without light suits, so um, we come back here now to get the item. Yeah, I did. 
right here, I'm gonna um, attract this huntering into the safe zone by activating it with Annihilator. It's like a combination of light and dark energy. So normally, if they if they walk into a light charge safe zone, they instantly die, and they're kind of stupid, so they don't even try to avoid those. But uh, if you shoot it with specifically Annihilator, they will also be like attracted to it and they will die. Um, I think the game actually tells you about that if you like check the Annihilator. Like, um, I don't know. No, I think you have to shoot a safe zone with Annihilator. Um, and then if you scan it for the logbook entry, it will tell you that it will, like, attract dark enemies or something. I will be doing that again later, um, just to, to clear out a mini-boss of various enemies while I do some multitasking, because they'll just go and they'll, um, you know, be like moths and just walk into the bright light. Yep. I don't know why I switched beams there. How much damage does Annihilator Beam do? Um, the Uncharged Shots do 12 damage, and they fire at the same rate as Power Beam, which does 2 damage. I don't know how much charge Annihilator does. I think Not it's enough more to than open 50, portals, though. clearly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more than 50, I think. Charge, it's much charge Annihilator. Does. It's likely powerful or whatever, but no one uses it. Yeah, I, I use it once in a run, It's DPS than um, just Uncharged Annihilator. I do use Charged Annihilator once to like murder a bunch of fish because it has a ridiculous <laughs> AOE effect when it explodes. Yeah, um, that's that's the reason people use Charged Annihilator to kill the ammo fish and ammo bats. You can it's really funny when you do it. The game just lags out when you pick up all of the drops. Alright, the real pro gamer move here is to bomb open this um rubble and then realize that it was the power bomb you picked up the first time you went to Torvs and you feel silly. That's the pro gamer move. Have you done that? That's pretty funny. But I have the opposite problem. Sometimes when I'm playing, um, like a, like a randomizer or something, I'll forget to get that because my 100% muscle memory will tell me I already got that. Right? <laughs> I already picked it up. I walked all to that or whatever. I, I got that when I was walking around. All right, so now I'm going back to Lower Torvus again. I'm going to be doing the cleanup in a really interesting way. Um, we talked about this briefly earlier. This is called the grapple delay route. Um, the new like boost jump methods and stuff like that to cross Grand Abyss um, ended up um, making it so that it was worth delaying the grapple beam because you no longer needed it to safely complete your speedrun um, crossing Grand Abyss. Uh, um, what was I saying? Now, now I delay the grapple beam. So because I still have to pick up the grapple beam, um, it's going to be an interesting route here. Uh, the room that has it um, contains the mini boss grapple guardian, and the grapple guardian um, fight trigger only can be activated if you, if the first door that you open when entering sacrificial chamber is um, the top door. There are some, there are two doors along the bottom that I will go through to pick up an item. Uh, and I, I can't just go, like, back the way I came to start the fight because I'll have to open the, the fight from, like, the wrong door or whatever. So I'll be going out of bounds, um, walking around out of bounds to the other side of the room and then opening that door and then hitting the cutscene trigger. But right now it's time for Tog on Guardian, so... Yeah. It's kinda, kinda this is a very fun fight and Max was on no bombs. It, there's four bomb slots you need to activate. It's extremely fun. Oh, I got it. So, oh, nice. The strat is to um, see a fight Chica, right? And you get floaty jump, and it's a weird state where you just jump really high. Um, and then you wall crawl to lower Torvis. Um, once you do that, you can then fight Power Bomb Guardian. You use Dark Burst to activate these bomb slots. And if you screw up the, um, and then you just, as Dark Burst is traveling, you jump over to the bomb slots. If you screw up the instant morph, oh, um, you soft lock, and you get to do it four times. This fight is fantastic in Max percent no bombs. And you have to do it too, because, um, not only because Max percent, but also this, um, this boss actually locks um, one of the Sky Temple keys arbitrarily. It just doesn't exist until you pick up main PBs. Yeah, another one of these random player changes that the game does, which is transparent for a casual player, but... I said I'd be asking more. Yeah. 
even if you um pick up a power bomb expansion to have power bombs you still have to pick up those actual power bombs like the main ones um that are supposed to be your first um because there's a sky temple key all the way in aegon wastes that just like doesn't exist until you pick up those power bombs which is really funny because metroid prime has like the exact same thing where you have to pick up the main power bombs to be able to get a, a choice of artifact yeah and one of the end games really funny games. Those are the fish I was talking about earlier, the five fish. Yep. So I actually thought about this last night. I'm going to take a safety save here, um, just in case. If you remember last night, I, I screwed up the, the little um, short wall crawl, like going back in bounds after turns as well south. So I'm just going to take a save here because the last one was kind of long ago. Um, There's like the way I screwed up was fine because all I had to do was just jump up and try it again. But it is possible to get stuck in the ceiling. I'd rather not have that happen and have to redo a bunch of the run. So. Just to save. It's right there. Why not, right? Or I could, like, I do want to do Transit Tunnel South out of bounds. I don't have to do it out of bounds, but it's cool. Yeah. I might as well just save right here. If there wasn't a save, I, I probably would just do it normally. Yeah. We're pretty solidly in the cleanup at this point. Um... Just wrapping up everything that we couldn't get before in the areas. It's uh, the chill part of Echoes now. Oh. oh, what? I don't know. I, did I walk off? Was I holding my stick without holding R? I wasn't paying attention. Oh, well, that's fine. I'll just do uh, yeah. it again. Ari is doing like, some jumps on the hook, you didn't hear, to just keep having to do the biggest part of the puzzle, which is power bombing the water thingy, and then using the half pipe to get up to here. As always, it's faster. I don't know why I switched to power beam. There's an annihilator beam door right here. Doesn't lose any time at least. Uh, yeah, the reason there's an input display on the screen is because I, I bought my own and I asked if I could use it. That's the only reason. This is one of the sillier out of bounds in the game. You just, uh... Yeah, this one sucks. I hate this one. Second try, though. That's good. <laughs> just nice. like last night. Yeah, just like last night. Let's not go all the way for last night, though, and make it in the mountains. It's right here, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm really bad at knowing where this stupid missile is. I... Yeah, there's I some weird stuck collision you need to jump around. And normally, so you're supposed to... This is like a 2D morph ball tunnel room, and you're supposed to like navigate around with some like water cubes. Can I get around, please? Hello? Okay, that's all. That's fine, by the way. Interesting thing about Aether jumping out of bounds is that you can use the, the gravity boost uh, if you're underwater. You also cannot screw attack by accident and soft lock yourself, which is really awesome. Mm hmm. So oh yeah. If you, if you screw attack and um and you don't land on standable collision, uh, you will not be able to unmorph and you will be stuck. For... Yeah, I got it. That's a ceiling warp. I just um the collision for rooms that are not where the map is currently not on doesn't work the same. It's kind of um there's like not holes. I don't really know how to explain it. It's you just it you allows can you to trick your to way through it. If you if you like have some speed falling onto a ceiling that has a slope and it's not the current room that the map is on, then when you unmorph, you'll like go through the slope and that's how I went back and bounced there. Um, previously in some places on, in this run, I um, waited for a room to load around me, but that room actually doesn't take that long to load and I'm like very slow in the water, so I, I'm not able to do that there. So that's why I have to go and bounce uh, the way I did with a ceiling warp. And then I just then I just touch the door from the other side to, to transition the room like like you would normally when you just like walk through a door to change the map. Alright, now don't do the any percent movement. It's time to go to Grapple Guardian. I have forgotten the grapple beam in some route playthroughs, but not recently. <laughs> uh, it's not like in several months. It's really late, Grapple Beam. So late, you forgot. Again, the main advantage of uh, delaying Grapple Beam this long is that you don't have to deal with the Dark Pirate Commando spawns. And they lock the doors because they are smart, and unlike Alpha Blog. 
So you have to kill them or make them go away. Usually by killing them. You know them. what I should do? I should I should switch my beam away from light beam there so I don't accidentally shoot the store after this. Because if I if I shoot the door that I just came from, then it will open when I go out of bounds, and then the first door that I enter the grapple beam room from will be that door, technically. So I won't be able to trigger the grapple guardian fight. In my personal best um, 204, I only did like three runs of 100%, but my personal best 204 did that and didn't notice. Um, because at the time I was like dropping a lot of frames um, in my reporting, I was kind of preoccupied. So I um, I ended up like losing like four minutes to that, which is pretty cool. But all I have to do is not shoot the door that's behind me, and then I'm fine. Oh, and um, worth noting that going to pick up the item in this tunnel um, that reloads the grapple guardian room. Yeah, it does. And that's why I this hit, I had a proximity load trigger for the, the room after this. I'm pretty sure it's proximity anyway. I would be surprised if it wasn't. That's enough, right? So I just Aether jump, walk around the boundaries of the room, and then that's the door that I want to, to shoot, like this. Shot, right? Yeah, I didn't hear it, so. Then I just jump, get close to it, it opens like so, and then I, I hit the trigger for the fight like this, and it re puts me back in bounds. Yep. Here's the Grapple Guardian. You want to scan the Grapple Guardian first, so you can properly target the weak point. And then it also has... You have to shoot in the front to stun, so you can now then shoot it back. Interesting enough, this would be a great uh, time to use Sunburst, but you just don't have it. And... Half the half the fight or more, but oh, unfortunately the way it routes in. Bad. It's like the last one of the last items you pick up before um, final bosses. Yeah, grapple delay complete. If you quit, uh, leave the room after triggering the Gabriel Gorgon fight, then you, know, oh, you, you come whoops. back. <laughs> I didn't know you could fall in here. <laughs> you you can fall just enough to be annoying and have to bomb jump yeah. to get out. It's great. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so if you leave the fight and then come back later, you can trigger the fight again, but the Gabriel Beam doesn't drop. It's it's brute like that way. It fixes it in the hazard. Okay, I'm going to go to the right, not straight. I'm going to the right. This isn't any percent, this is hundred percent. I have to go get some items. So I'm gonna go to the right. Oh oops, that's okay. I wonder if I can do a dash to the door. Uh, not really. It's worth trying. This is one of my least favorite items to get in the game. It's just kind of slow and boring. Yeah. There's something funny though. Uh, this bomb slot, you don't actually have to bomb it to activate it. You can just kind of like get close to it like this. And then really? it turns off the, the air vent here. Huh. Oh, whoops. Not the day I learned. Oh, come on. You can also bomb that slot multiple times and get um, layers of beeps, and it's really funny. That actually only happens on the randomizer. Oh. That That is a property of um, something Claris did, where, um, so the game, uh, when you, uh, that, that bomb slot doesn't actually work. It doesn't do anything unless you have the gravity boost. Um, and in order for the game to check whether or not you have the gravity boost to actually make it do something, um, it only checks upon rune load. Um, so the first one, like when the rune loads. Uh, so what Claris, the original developer of the randomizer and um, a very well-known Metroid Prime speedrunner, uh, what she did for the randomizer was she made it so that instead the game checks 
um, I don't know if it's every frame, but like probably like, you know, like every couple frames, handful of frames, it checks if you have gravity boost in your inventory to let the bomb slot work. Um, the reason for this is because, um, uh, I don't even know why. That multi world wasn't even a thing back then, right? Uh, it's something I think like it, it was probably it, it was probably something else to do with um with like a translator gate because translator gates are the same. If you if you don't have a translator when you enter a room, if you get that translator in the room, um the if there's a gate that requires that translator, it won't work until you reload the room. So she had to fix um yeah, to fix all it, that it, stuff. It's if you like connect connect a gravity boost and then room them nearby or something. Yeah. So if you if if like another player collects gravity boost for you, um. Uh, while you're in that room, then um, it will work immediately. You won't have to leave and come back. That's the that's the reason for that weird thing where the the bomb slot will like work constantly. Um, it's just a um, a side effect of um, Claris's solution to that um, problem. Hmm. Now I know. Yeah. And yeah, people are talking about logbook. It's pretty boring. It's like not really anything interesting. It takes a long time to scan things, and like it doesn't actually really like add anything to the run. A uh, side effect of me not killing Quentin is that I have to do this jump again to get back. Um, oh, don't they knock me off, please. Okay. Now I'm just gonna uh, finish my sanctuary cleanup. Yeah, Sanctuary cleanup is really short. You get most of the items the first time. And the only item we really have to um, leave until now, barring load delay strats, is the same map station. So we just get these items now with it. This item is really easy to forget. Oh, whoops. You know what? I'm gonna blow you up. Oh no! He wasn't hurting nobody. Ink smasher. Ink <laughs> smashed. Uh, on this version of the game, uh, you can this is the measure spawns after you defeat the spider version, but they forgot to lock the door, so you can just leave. Uh, after in later, later versions, remember to fix that. So there's both a door lock and then and that tunnel is also like a bar barrier that appears. It's quite unique and interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Ink Smashers. I think they're very funny. If you have um, a trick that some people might know about called Cannonball, um, it's an item that um, you get when... It's, not, it's a temporary item the game gives you when you launch yourself out of a cannon. Um, it makes the Morph Ball invincible, um, and like also does some other funky stuff, like does like 500,000 damage per frame to things that are vulnerable to it, and like um, also... It does a bunch of wonky stuff. Is basically what I need to know. If you, if you do um, a technique um, to a fire cannonball, um, like keep it after a cannon, um, you'll be invincible. And um, when Ink Smashers try to like kick you around uh, in Morph Ball, they'll like kick you around like a soccer ball. It's, it's very fun. They're very, very funny enemies. They don't hear. They just try to kick you. High vandalism. It's no, kind of also another thing you need uh, light to light to it for. There is some ways around it, but it's just easier if you have light to it. Yeah, um, getting this in um, the Sanctuary One Trip route um, with Varia's suit is really, really dumb. Yeah, I forgot about this item completely. Yeah, yeah you have to um, get it with five energy tanks, I think. I don't remember. I think the route might have six. It's either five or six. But it's it's pretty bad. I don't like it. There's a there's a annoying method to go out of bounds in the room that has the key, and then you have to um, climb up it by doing some really awkward bomb jumps. Did I get the power bomb already? Oh, good. Okay. You collected the drop with the old-fashioned way of touching it. That's wrong. <laughs> Down. No jumps. Hello. I, I cannot jump. I have forgotten how to jump. Down. This jump to that platform is actually like 
like not a trivial jump. You have to time your space jump correctly in order to be able to make that. So this section of the uh, Sanctuary Fortress, my King Hive actually, is quite boring because there's just like the key there on the ends and like five rooms that are empty. Yeah, there's it's true. not a lot going on here. It's too bad that it looks so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got the double. Nice. Nice. Fun fact about the, the Metroid that's currently to my left. Um, if you jump in the void, it disappears forever. See? It's gone. Uh, I guess the devs just assumed that the most likely way the player was going into the void was because the Metroid grabbed you. So yeah, that's uh, whatever this room is called. Or area sanctuary, yeah. Now we're just cleaning up Aegon. That's also pretty chill. Um, yeah, Aegon is the next area. Is there anything we really need to explain about the run or in that area? Aside from like Dark Samus? Uh, there's like Dark Samus, I don't know, just like Amorbus maybe, I yeah. suppose. I suppose we can talk about other Prime things. Yeah, you can talk about other Prime things. No, well, Dark Samus is like immediate, so we'll wait. Well, you got like a minute and a half. Oh, well, um... No Dark Zero, Fusion Vari is a great suit. Yeah, I love my puke suit. Fusion Vari is good. Also, the light suit is good. I love the light suit. Yeah, who, Hugo knows what's up. <laughs> fusion suit is good. Don't just the fusion suit. I guess, uh, while well, there isn't much to talk about, we can... You can plug the Metroid Prime Randomizer tournament that's currently going on. Yeah, on uh, the speed gaming channels, idea. there's um, Taking Cat Randomizer races being restreamed on occasion. Um, we're on what round five out of six before a top eight bracket, so that's cool. Um, yeah, Diggle is participating in that, but unlike yeah. her, I don't really play Metroid Prime very much, so I, I'm not participating. It's basically a completely different game from Prime 2 when you're going fast. Or to go fast in Prime 1 is completely different from Echoes. Um, yeah. Anyways, back to this game. Here is a boss, I think. I don't know. I always blink when it happens. So I don't really think it exists. I think people are lying to me when they say there's a boss here. There's a boss here? Whoa. Yeah, I know, right? <coughs> well, I guess you can't host Discord links. Uh, there's, there, what's the? Um, you have a website for Randovania, no? You have a, you have a website that you can use. Yeah. Uh, also, I you, coughed and I missed the boss. If you link it to me, I can post it. That's a great idea. Uh, let me get. To I, I assume it was the Discord you tried to link and not your website. No, I, I think they, they told me we could share. The bot wouldn't share the, the link, but we could share them ourselves. But we're not. Yeah. It's a great place to be if you like the Metroid Prime games. There's a lot of friendly people. They like to help out. and yeah. Pretty much every day there are people in there just like playing a multi-world or like sharing things with each other and stuff. Pretty active. And there's like almost always a tournament going on, like every half a year or whatever. So it's... Oh, come on, no! I, I got the BSJ, but I got, like, no speed out of it, and it wouldn't really screw attack out. That's okay, I can just do a backup to get out. Uh, I have to fight Dark Samus there, um, because that missile that I just picked up in that room doesn't, um, exist until you reload the room after Dark Samus. So that's why I opened that dark door and, like, left and came back, because I unloaded the room by loading command center, and then I reloaded it and went back to get the missile. Mm. That's just the best way to get, um... That's just the best way to get it. Yeah, My Dark there. Samus isn't really hard casually, but she can, like... She has, like, attacks that um, make her invincible during them, and it's kind of slow. So luckily, you can just use a power bomb to kill her. It's also mm -hmm. your first time fighting a boss or something, so 
maybe something like that. And you don't have a dark beam or light beam. I'm gonna take a save here. Um, there's a room coming up later that um, can crash if something um, intensive happens. Um, the, the game has two layers active and one of the upcoming rooms. There's like an initial pirate layer, and there's an, another layer that has Metroids in it that uh, triggers after you defeat Dark Samus. Um, this game is like pretty unstable. Um, it has a object list, and if the object list is full when trying to create new objects, then the game will just crash. Um, you can even view, um, on all retail versions of the game, you can like literally just view a screen. Um, you can view a crash handler um, that we recently found out, and it'll literally just tell you the object is full. Uh, but yeah, um, I if you boost in that room, um, while like certain rooms are loaded, um, the game like will crash. Uh, and recently, I actually had a situation, nice, where a um, Metroid lashed onto me. Oh my! <laughs> it was like a it was like a Metroid kickflip. What was that? <laughs> Okay, hopefully these guys leave me alone while I do this stupid backup. Nice. Yeah, I, I had a situation where a Metroid latched onto me. Um, it, it like comboed me and that was enough to crash my, my game. So I'd rather just take the free save and... Do it that way. Stop morphing here, it's not faster. Oh, uh, I need to make sure I go back to this platform, actually. Uh, there's a trigger for the pirate fight um, underneath the, the- in front of the door here. I, you can approach it from over and skip it. Oh. If you hit it, it'll lock the door. So I want to make sure you do it like this. So coming up, this next room is the is the scary room that uh, can crash if you um, spawn too many objects, like a boost trail or like a Metroid latching onto particles, things like that. So I'm just going to make sure I don't do that. Just roll on through, don't get blocked by the Metroid, and we're fine now. Somehow screw attack is enough. Like, it's fine. Uh, once this um, missile is picked up, um, this room is like pretty inconsequential to the object list, so um, I can now boost in this room perfectly fine. I honestly don't know why the Metroids are here. I haven't read the lore in this game in quite a while. My casual playthrough was forever ago. I think it's just a pirate. They love, they love. They love Metroids. They Metroids, want to test, yeah. test on them. See what the phase on does. There's a, there's a lore entry somewhere where like one pirate says like, is like, is like describing his experience trying to like feed the Metroid that was like a pet or something. And then it eventually like kills him. And then there's like another lore entry that says like warning pirates do not feed the Metroids or something. <laughs> I didn't actually know about that until recently. I was watching a friend of mine like just play through the game casually, and I thought that was very cute. So here is a um, a cool room. Um, it's an ammo refill station. I want more power bombs for the rest of the run, so I'm just gonna get them from here. Also, 200 missiles, so you didn't miss oh any. My God. Yeah, true. I just destroyed two of those um, little inlets. Yeah, this is kind of key. All the spawns after the main par uh, power bombs. I believe it's because they changed the enemies here in the room, so they just accidentally made the kind key in the same layer. Oh, really? That's interesting. Oh, I yeah. would have never um, made that connection. Yeah, the, the ink storm only appears after the layer, and I think the inlets has something. It's it's weird. It's Minor differences, but how much damage does Screw Attack do? Screw Attack does exactly 36 damage per frame of contact. That's something. 36 damage per frame. And this game runs at um, 60 FPS, so awesome. you know, um, lots of frames means lots of damage. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, that rock we destroyed two hours ago. Yeah, it's relevant. We saved one second there. All right, I redeemed myself. I got the movement in the, in the dark world. Crap, I failed it in the light world. I have redeemed myself. So that's the um, Annihilator Beam special combo, Sonic Boom. Um, the beam combos in this game are 
not very useful. They're like comically not useful. They do some things, but for like combat related purposes, they are very, very, very situational and you're most of the time just better off using your beams. Or even super missiles. Yeah, like the, the, the best use of the beam combos is the fact that they can activate bomb slots. That's like the best use. Mm -hmm. Sunburst this is, is like... also so slow and bad that it ends up being good for, it saves three seconds nice. on Emperor Ring 1 because you can just fire it while it's um, bringing up its weak point. So you fire, switch uh, to Annihilator or Super Missiles and charge that. Because Sunburst moves so slowly, you can do that. The charge combos, and the, they're not that bad, actually. They're, they're over but, is the but problem. But, like, they cost 30 ammo, and then you get a Sonic Boom 30 ammo of both, and you all cannot get no. them, like, so late in the game. So, you don't really have an opportunity okay. to use it then. Yeah. Forgive me, I once again forgot to look up which safe zones to shoot here with the Annihilator Beam, so I will now just shoot these three and hope it works. SMH, my head, my head. Before uh, before being asked to do this a couple days ago, I actually had not played um, 100% or any speedrun of this game, for that matter, in like three months. So I, because I only did like a few runs um, of 100% specifically at the time, I uh, haven't committed um, some of the like more minor stress like that to memory. I'm getting beat up. So right now the um, the enemies are going towards the annihilator safe zones and dying. I can let them die while I pick up the key on this room. Are they all dead? Oh, there's that one. No, no, shoot the safe zone. The safe zone. Go into it. Go. Go. Yes. <laughs> A very stubborn moth, but still to the flame. That's actually an easy for charging it later because it doesn't it doesn't hold home. Uh, so people are asking about Emperor Ring 3, um, one of the fight phases of the final boss. Yes, you can screw attack, but you don't screw attack its normal hitbox. You screw attack a um, leftover hitbox um, that was just like, left there during development um, for like some other part of the fight. It's like underneath its kneecaps. Um, you can screw attack it, and if you do it optimally, you can kill Emperor Ring 3 in like one to two or sometimes three screw attacks. It's so much better than doing the fight the intended way. Yeah, uh, the only time in this game that you will, like, ever see someone not do that is if they don't have space jump boots, because you will always need super attack to reach Emperor Ring 3. Uh, it doesn't work on the, the Wii versions of the game either, I should clarify. The Wii versions, you cannot super attack Emperor Ring 3, but I'm pretty sure on Japanese game you still can. Yeah, I'm pretty certain they can. Okay. How do the keys work in this game? Um, upon If you have all the keys to open a lock upon the room being loaded, then you'll be able to open the lock. Like right there, that was the third key I picked up for Aegon. So after I picked up the key, the game actually unloaded Aegon Temple and reloaded it because they intentionally do that to check if that's your last key. So you don't have to leave and come back to reload this place. It'll just do it automatically. Now I'm fighting a Morgus. If you're talking about Sky Temple keys, there are two in each of the side regions and three in each, and there are three in Temple Grounds, the main hub. So, I noticed earlier somebody asked about um, Fast Amorbus. So, Amorbus um, has like three phases. Uh, the first phase usually has one worm, the second phase has two, and the third phase usually has three. But if you kill the second worm before the first worm detaches from the center egg, then the game won't play the cutscene that starts the third phase, so the third phase will start with only two of the worms. Uh, this will just prevent you from having to shoot a third worm and all that stuff, it's fast. Um, if you do this in the last phase though, again, a second time, then the game will not trigger the- Oh nice, it failed it again because I shot the side from this. Uh, the game will, um, how should I put this? It won't play the cutscene for the fight ending and you will softlock. You'll just be stuck in this room rolling around forever and the worms will be free. But since that cutscene played, I'll have to shoot three worms. Yeah. You have to do um, it pretty fast for it to work. There's a pretty bad attack this boss can do that if you like to call the worm rave. Um, if you, when you get all the worms on the ball, um, then you don't shoot them immediately. Um, they can do a really terrible attack um, and just like or lasers at you from a disco ball or something. 
Um, really oh, slow. Sure. Now my light beam hits. Can't be interrupted while, when it's happening. You just don't want to see it at all. Yeah, but then when, when there's only one worm left, like this guy, um, they can't actually do the rave attack. And yeah. That's some Morbus. And now I've gotten the dark suit. Hooray! Very important dark item. Suit. Other than sunburst, is like one of the, the last. Noise yeah, this is like one of the last major items we pick up. So, uh, I, like I um, talked about at the beginning of the run, um, the Torb's energy, how did that work to trigger the bomb slot, whatever? The, um, the Sanctuary energy was the only energy I had to pick up and return to acquire the Light Suit. Um, the Torbus energy doesn't do anything, and the Aegon energy returning it is only required to pick up um, an item in Mining Plaza, which is um, a room that requires, um, like the item exists, but in order to open the path to it, you need to shoot some Echo Locks. Excuse me, like Echo Visor locks, and they don't exist until you after you've returned the Aegon energy. You can use a trick called Infinite Speed to get it, but it's just not faster because I have to acquire the Dark Suit anyway, right? So why not just come pick up the energy and then like return it along my path? This is much faster. Uh, the Dark Suit does not allow you to hold more keys. Um, the Dark Suit, the only thing it does is reduce your. Um, your damage and Dark Aether from 5 to 1.2 per second, but the Light Suit already makes me immune. Oh, and it takes away the horrible Ink Storm hiss. Yeah, it takes away a sound effect that a certain Dark World enemy makes. Fun fact about this bomb slot in this room, you can boost around in it for some reason. I don't know why, but you can. If you want to be pedantic, the Light Suit doesn't make you immune to the the Dark Aether damage. It just makes the Dark Aether damage does not, not exist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, really? Yeah. Does it change room layers? Or? No, the cold has like, if you have light suit, skip. Oh, okay. So it just doesn't trigger it at all, it doesn't change the value to zero? Yeah, I've tried to make okay. it the light suit to the take damage, but mm, nope. Oh, yeah, you'd have to make a lot more adjustments to that then, Yeah. Like another hook. And that's that's not easy in this game, this game doesn't really have the tools to use like that, it just kind of changes. Uh, I do have other tools, it's just like, not simple. I'm gonna go around this. That safe zone actually triggers a cutscene that starts a fight that locks the doors. Um, but if you don't, if you just don't touch the safe zone, it will never happen. All right, I'm gonna make a save here, uh, just because I can. Maybe there's, maybe. Out of, there's one out of bounds trick left that I don't want to screw up, so I'm gonna. My favorite thing is free real for the safe zone is to shoot dark beam, and that causes the triggers to the table to disappear. Because the safe zone is a pierce. It's yeah, amazing. that is true. You can prevent the jump guardian fight from triggering by shooting the safe zone with Dark Beam as well. Oh, come on. Very funny. Very, very funny. Inglets are I a think very nice enemy. Not rude at all. The uh, the first pass of that room that we're talking about, I don't... Yeah, you don't have Dark Beam in the first pass of that room. So, like, casually, if you walk into the safe zone, because you're taking a bunch of damage with only, like, one or two energy tanks, yeah, right. then you're gonna, you're gonna walk into the safe zone and trigger the fight. It's basically an introduction to the ink waters. Yeah, more your introductory fight. These commandos are very, very annoying. Oh, yep, there we go. Push me off, yep. <laughs> yeah, at this point in the game, the enemies aren't dangerous, they're just rude. Uh, so the only thing was, um, left to do in Aegon are to um, pick up um, a couple more missiles and to return the energy and pick up um, two energy tanks, that's all. Then I'll be leaving out to Temple Grounds and uh, finishing up my cleanup there. Yeah. Uh, back like two hours ago, we used the, par the bomb slot there to unlock the gate. So we could pass by it on the way back, back there. Yeah. Fun fact, it's not really needed to... It's possible to pass by a hit, but it's just slow. <laughs> uh, yeah, when does the, um, the Metroid Prime Weekly tournament, or, or sorry, races happen? Are those uh, still going on, or...? Sunday's at 3? I think it oh, okay. is still going Oh, so... On. Yeah, I think it's two hours ago. Oh, two hours ago? Okay, dang. I would've, yeah. um, would've, um... 
loved it if it was happening a little later. I know the Echo's weekly is Saturday, I just couldn't remember when the yeah. Prime Weekly is. Prime Weekly is probably over unless something's gone horribly wrong, which, given Randovania, yeah. Hey, Dark's here. Didn't you make Randovania? <laughs> yeah, I still think about that, yes. <laughs> We're talking about Rando, and we don't. <laughs> we, I think we failed to mention that Darkseer is one of the developers of the Randomizer. Um, recently had had Prime One support added to it, and um, Sunset had bashed his Randomizer, bashed Prime's Randomizer. But yeah, it's really cool. If you're Randomizer is great. You can play um, multi worlds. Um, and they work between um, games for Prime 1 and Prime 2. And it's planned for Prime 3 to also be compatible with that, with that group. So, yeah. you like yeah. playing games with your friends and you like Metroid Prime, that's always something to try out. It works on console as well, so you don't need to play on Dolphin. Yeah. Specifically Wii. Wii. You can play on, um, yeah, specifically Wii, sorry. It will not work on a GameCube, as yeah. far as I know. When do you all get your curse about it? We had a, a show here at the GDK Hotfix a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, random, be, on good? random number generation. Yes, uh, it should be. It's already on the YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And if, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try something here. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say if we have a, a little bit of time, uh, I can mention the YouTube. Oh my yeah, god. Um, yeah, if you missed out on any Hotfix shows, like the Metroid Prime Hunters run right before this, or the random number generation uh, Prime Randomizer from a few weeks ago. Uh, check out the archive on youtube.com slash games done quick and if you're watching this on YouTube uh, check us out on twitch.tv slash games done quick for live shows uh, most weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and then variable times on the weekend um, and we will be shifting times for a few of those hotfix shows so check games done quick dot com slash hotfix uh, for more info and correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first episode of your Hotfix show, Aimbot, right? The second. Second, um, okay. Yeah, what I, did I, you guys play uh, last week? I started with Borderlands 2. Uh, I see. Wow, that's so, a pretty good game. Yeah. This I isn't that's a good one. officially Aimbot, but it's close enough because it's, it's an FPS, but I kind of wanted to go for more of an overarching theme with... Uh, the Castlevania oh, wow. that's going on later today. Oh, okay. So it's it's the oh, Metroidvania so. day. Oh, there we go. Plus Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> Which is it's fair. Mega, Man, Mega Man Rando is right after this. So if you're, or Bingo, sorry, not Rando. So if you're interested in that, check that out. Oh, yeah, some people were asking. I figured it might happen. Um, I did pick up the Dark Burst, but if you pick up the Dark Burst on um, the wrong room layer, um, like the initial one, for example, it just won't the cutscene won't play. But I did pick it up. I do have it. You know what? I'll just I'll show it off. Why not? I need some fun. There. There you go. Dark Burst. Wow. And that activates bomb slots. It's great. Whoops. Am I gonna fall down here? Is it gonna make me fall down? Oh, that would be sick. Aw, dang. Oh, that's too deep. Anyways, that's, uh, uh that's... That grass, I swear to God, has blocked so many shots. It is the rudest grass. grass in the Prime Trilogy. Man, screw that grass. <laughs> who, put the, who put that there? <laughs> it's a desert. It shouldn't even be alive. Why does it block my shots sometimes? I hate this grass. <laughs> uh... So yeah, this is, um, I will not be using an elevator to another area, except for, um, actually that's not true, I, I go to Great Temple, but I, me personally, I consider Great Temple to be an extension of Temple Grounds. Yeah. Uh, I will not be returning to any of the three, um, major areas, I've already picked up everything from there. So now I'm just going to be cleaning up, uh, Temple Grounds, collecting the three, um, Sky Temple keys that I've left here, uh, and then, um, Traversing to Sky Temple using the nine Sky Temple keys and fighting the final boss. Remember, remember that light lock we moved like two hours ago? Here. That was a yeah. one second time save. <laughs> yeah, this this game is full of um, things that you do that will like save you a second later. Like just moving a block or blowing up another block and just other random stuff. What's the current record for this run? Uh, I don't know what the RTA is, but the in-game time is 1.47 by Mr. Miguel. 
That's a pretty good run. Um, he uses a different route than everybody else um, because he's the only one good enough to pull it off. Uh, so if you really like this run, I recommend going to check that one out. It's a lot more interesting than this route. And his execution level is much higher. I, I haven't run 100% that much. I just did it because I wanted to try to get sub two. And I only did a few runs. Um, Would have gotten it if I didn't make that horrible four minute mistake near the end of the run. And then, I don't know, I just kind of stopped speedrunning for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. As, as, as one does. Right, the RTA for this game, for Miguel's run, is uh, 216.41. Okay, well. Yeah. And mine is uh, 234 something, I don't remember. 234.48. Yeah. About half an hour longer than the in-game time. This is the wrong beam, Aaron. <laughs> There are many beings. Uh, DF, I believe the route is two and a half minutes faster, so I'm being close. I'm pretty sure it's two and a half. Uh, come on. Oh, no! <laughs> Rocks! Please! <laughs> so, uh, another thing about in-game time, it's actually faster. Well, I have to pick up a missile here, um, but um, if the route was optimized by RTA, I probably would have picked up this missile earlier and have, had instead um, gone around um, through Temple Grounds um, to get to the later parts. Um, that's the thing that you'll see in any percent speedruns as well. Um, you'll see that they tra they travel to the three um, edges of Temple Grounds, not um, through Temple Grounds, but they use Great Temple because the elevators um, don't count in the in-game time. Or they don't count the, the real time of the elevators going up and down, so a bit faster. That room um, that I just boosted through right there, I boosted around the, the center of it instead of the edges because the edges have like this really annoying collision that like uh, kills your speed. So it actually does save about a second and a half to, to boost like through the middle of that room instead going around. Now it's time for one of my least favorite rooms in the entire game, uh, Profane Path. This room has two um, Dark Pirate Commandos and some Echo Locks. I'm gonna try to kill one of the um, one of the Dark Commandos using this Annihilator safe zone. So that one's dead, and then this one here, um, hopefully he goes into that safe zone, because if not, he's going to probably uh, block my shot when I try to hit this. Okay, luckily he didn't. Well, not block the shot, but basically, even though I'm locking on to the Annihilator lock, the game will just decide to home in on the, the enemy instead, because the game is very good. That is the, uh, the final beam ammo expansion of the run. Grapple beam! This room here, it's... Quite surprising that there are some platforms to conceive with Dark Visor. So you don't really I need was... screw tech. I was shocked when I learned there were Dark Visor <laughs> platforms here like the first okay. randomizer tournament. I was commentating Stop. a race and I saw that I'm like, excuse me, what is this? Leave also, um, the squad is here. I'm gonna beat you up and take your lunch money. <laughs> Go away! One of my least favorite things uh, to do in this game is to charge up Seeker Missiles while also moving and jumping because you have to claw your controller to like hold the Y button and tap the B button without accidentally pressing A to cancel your Seeker charge. And like you also have to like hold the stick and you like the R button to aim and it's just like I, I hate clawing. I always never do it. You can press all the buttons in the controller. Yeah. When I do things like um, like BHJs and like boost jumps and stuff like that, I almost always um, overhand my controller. I press B, A, and X with um, different fingers for that kind of stuff, just because it's easier for me. Oh, nice, nice boost. Oh, nice. Like the Luckily, George has a name. Path. I forgot the name. I think it's George. Yeah, it's George. I'm surprised that hit that door. Here's another example of me hitting a low trigger, um, even though the movement to get to this door seems kind of slow. 
uh, by boosting off the ledge to hit the middle of the room, I hit the load for that room earlier, so I can uh, more quickly start this room load. How many keys are left? Uh, just one. It's actually the, um, the key is right beside the final area, so the one is almost finished. There's only um, two more energy tanks and two more missiles and one stat tank with to pick up. I don't actually know if this movement is faster than unmorph than just unmorphing. I have no idea. I've never timed it. I probably should, but I Imagine haven't putting played that in a much while. effort into any speed game you've ever done. Well, I mean, I don't know. I usually do that kind of stuff. Cause it's fun. No, I mean, no, fair. Thanks. But uh, I haven't been playing this game a lot, and I probably won't be after this. I got, I got school and stuff, you know. <laughs> I got, I got midterms coming up. Oh, nice. Good luck. I don't have time to do speedruns. I'm too busy making it randomizers. <laughs> I. I, mean, I guess I'm running Prime Hundo, but I'm planning to branch out into other things. One day I'll come back to this and get something approaching sub 2. Yeah. Oh, well, I forgot to mention this item on my list of items remaining. This is the Sunburst. Ah, uh, yes. Grand Chamber Windway. The best room in the uh, game. There's a, there's a really long and complicated puzzle to get this item. Can this pirate get me a second chain, please? But um, I can skip it by just um, jumping straight to the item uh, using some collision. That's bad. Come on, please. There we go. This puzzle is really, really long. Like yeah, yeah. there's actually a recent, not well, recent. It was almost a year ago at this point. Um, PCR Diceron found a way to. Um, acquire that item without um, doing that bomb jump or without solving the puzzle by screw attacking onto the piece of collision that I jumped off of from. Uh, and we were like, oh my goodness, I think this like will allow us to skip this puzzle on the Wii version, finally, um, because the puzzle's one is really long. And after the puzzle, when you come back to the light world, the doors to leave lock until you defeat three dark pirate commandos, which is just the most annoying thing possible. Um, yeah. it's, it wastes like over two minutes. Uh, to do that puzzle, uh, but for some reason, it well I know I know the reason why, but on, on the Wii version it doesn't work um, because the uh, the screw attack hitbox on the Wii version is much larger. So like if you try to screw attack onto the the piece of collision, um, you will soft lock because you won't be able to hit the standable spot to unmorph. You can also soft lock doing that on the GameCube version, but only if you like don't land only if you don't aim at the edge of the wall. If you aim at the edge, then you'll be able to stand on it. But on Wii, it doesn't work, period. Uh, you have to still do that, like, gigantic, uh, gigantic puzzle and stuff. It's really annoying. But yeah, uh, coming up here, it's gonna tell me that I have 100% uh, of the items, but I still have to pick up the Sky Temple Key. The Sky Temple Keys just don't count towards percentage. Uh, yeah, there is a strat for emperoring using Sunburst that saves like three seconds. Um, honestly, I am not good at it and I barely practice it, so I just do the any percent strat with super missiles because I'm lazy. <laughs> I was talking about earlier how I would uh, how I should time that movement after the missile. And I like I'll, I'll I'll put time into doing that, but I won't put time into some like a boss strat. It's kind of funny. Uh, coming up here is uh, the last pickup of the run, Sky Temple Key number 9. Uh, scan visor, please. Hold the keys. What was that thing that flew across the bottom of my screen when I turned around? Don't worry about that it. piece of the... Oh, nice instant on Was that a piece of the, the cash? I looked away. Oh, come on. Very unprofessionally, I looked away. Oh, no. 
I'm gonna save at the same station just because, or just in case I'm stupid and I crash on a burning free. That would be kind of funny. <laughs> fresh? Oh yeah, you could crash, right? Yeah, if you screw attack and kill Emperor in three while it's in the middle of um, two specific attacks, um, one of like both of which are like laser attacks, then the game will crash. I don't think it's objectless full. I think it's an alloc failure. Like some some memory allocation just doesn't work, end up working correctly and causes a crash. Yeah. I've never seen the error, but I would say it's probably just crash because if they don't, I, they if expect I the boss to die. Purpose, um, if I ever get it on purpose, I'll show you the the error um, log. Oh, yeah, like... I, I, I briefly mentioned that earlier, didn't I? I didn't say how to actually do it. Yeah, you didn't say how. I guess you guys can talk. You guys can talk about that while I go fight the boss. Dark Seeker, you have to tell tell them. I don't know what the combo is. Ah, oh, right. What? The combo to bring up the uh, the crash screen. Oh yeah. Uh, it's funny because like uh, some of the developers of the game, they still like sometimes they respond to questions about the games. Uh, from the, from the hacking community. So we found something interesting, like for debugging purposes in corruption. And we were talking to one of the developers about it. And they mentioned like, oh yeah, I remember this crash screen still being able in the previous games. And then you have like lock it behind some button combination. So I went up and looked for it and found it. So after the game crashes, you can press like uh, hold X, Y, and Z. Oh, and the second controller, and then press up, down, right, left, something like that. And the crash screen shows up. Yeah, it's um, yeah, X, Y, plus R, and press D, hold and press those. And then after you press D pad, right, left, um, down, up. That's it. Clearly, yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> I did it earlier because I was curious. I have, a, I have like a video of it doing it with my display too, so it's like pretty easy to see. Interesting enough, it is, uh, even it still works on the on corruption. It's still with a GameCube controller. <laughs> yeah, Emperor in here. Uh, it has like a uh, hard box down here uh, that you can still use, that's still vulnerable to use attack. Yep. So you can use all the impressive inter five damage per frame, per six or something. Yeah, this fight's kind of bad. It's hard to do it when I can't hear the, the movement of um, like bump the space jump or whatever. I, I never, I didn't even know that I relied on that so much. Just like subconscious stuff. But yeah, that's Emperor three. And uh, now it's time to uh, go fight Dark Samus three as well. Yeah, the Sky Temple is basically game okay, is the great temple, but upside down. It's a really cool design for the area, actually. I don't know why I did it. I don't know why I did it. Yeah. What am I doing? Okay, um, so I have to shoot 25 shots. So I have to shoot until I have 165 dark okay. Bless RNG. Uh, final bosses are Dark Samus 3 and 4. Hopefully we can skip the, the, the 4. Because it's just like some out scroller and flow and whatever. Yeah, four is a prime number, so we can't have that. Or not a prime number, excuse me. So, to do it, like, you hit the boss with a specific number of attacks to live it like, a precise health, the health. And then you can use a screw attack, because a screw attack is a great weapon. There's something about manipulating the boss so it doesn't go to the middle. I don't really know. No one knows. Dark Samus just does whatever she wants. That was a good fight, though. Oh, time, by the way. Sorry, I, I completely forgot to mention that. That's there was time when the cutscene ended there. I was just focusing on the fight because you have to. The execution there is really, really dangerous. But yeah, that's a uh, Dark Samus for Skip. Um, luckily, she didn't go to the center, and I was able to um, lock her in place with um, like using the missiles to bring up the shields and screw attacking her size to deal damage. It's, um, doing that requires a lot of practice. When I was learning the game, it's probably the thing I spent the most amount of time on, actually, because it saves so much time. Like, depending on how much damage you do with the first screw attack, and how much health she has when she goes to the center, and, like, the luck that you get after she goes to the center, when you damage her, like, it, it can waste, like, up to, like, two and a half, three minutes, even. Sometimes as little as one, but I don't know. It's, it's bad. I had a run once that lost, like, three minutes to it, which was pretty cool. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's my shred prime two echoes, uh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Give any from the RTA. Uh, oh, sorry, what was the what's the time? Two forty two thirty three. Oh, okay. So that's like that's like two eleven, two twelve, maybe. I don't know. It's it's not that bad for uh for a playthrough like this rusty. Uh, any shout outs? I guess Dacos community, um, like Draconif, Mr. Miguel, um, uh, well, I already said the Eva, Diceron, Ash. Randomizer community is pretty cool too. I've got two great ones in here Dark Zero Diggle. Hello. There's a lot of other great players there who, like, run weeklies, participate in tournaments, that kind of stuff. Um, they do a good job making the community fun. Um, uh, Just Declares too for, like, Pioneering some stuff about this game, making menu mod, which makes this game easier to practice on console, which is appreciated. Um, shout outs to Emerlin for letting me play this game. It was fun. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I guess that's pretty much it. All right. And yeah. that'll be the end of the Metroid Prime Showcase for today. Um, I definitely want to get more of that on aimbot because i again i really like the series i think it's really cool to watch um but that's all for me uh next up will be Mega Man bingo uh with hosted by smooth operative and with a bunch of people uh and so i will see you all later <laughs>